All right. Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club. Stop and chat. Today we have a very special, special, special returning guest. Mr. Josh Stewart is with us, man. How are you, bro? How's it going? It's not too bad. <laughs> going good, dude. Hey, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for somebody to get just two specials and they're going to. I'm sure in the beginning there was. In the beginning, there was no specials. And I know, there was but now one. you set a precedent. And people are I, counting. I, I've yeah. set it at three. Yeah. If they request another one, I'll oblige. When did this start? I don't know, actually. I, I don't remember which episode it was. D uh, did he get? Did he get the three specials? Did you get any specials when you were in the when you were on the show, Josh? Dude, I got mad specials. Mad specials. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, maybe then I was overdoing it, and now I just kind of I was. I, See, I'm like, I you set the th bar, three? and then you're like, you can't. I'm just trying to think three. about when he was on. Like, how long ago it was? We always listen. And this is no nobody's fault but our own. We uh, we say this every time we sit down. We don't think about this before the show. We never look right. at it. We're like, How, when were you on? We don't know. Kelly's going to look it up right now. Must have been like two years ago, right? Two it's and a half? It's been more than that. I think it, probably three. I think you say that with everybody. It's been about two years. <laughs> it's been about two years. <laughs> yeah. uh, January 29th, 2018. Wow. So three years three ago. Years. Over three years ago. Yeah, three what? Years ago. Strange. We've been doing the... I'd still trip out how long we've been doing this. I mean, I was going to say when you were doing like Static 2, you were on. <laughs> but maybe not. I didn't get uh, Jaron on my show, though, so I'm pretty Hey, this pretty is stoked. a good... Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm, half, uh, I'm hype, bro. Yeah, yeah. dubs, bro. Yeah. Is that... Hold on, that's Mary J. Blige, isn't it? The uh, sweet thing? <laughs> yes. Mm, I'm in yes. love anyway. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Every time I meet... I Well, I meet somebody that um, had a, a part that I watched a lot... I immediately, I can't stop singing the song in my head. Oh, dude. So, <laughs> and I'll start doing it. I've been like, I was, I've been around a lot. I was interviewing Costin once and I started singing the strangest. I was singing his, uh, that Frank Black song, the. Oh, Los the Angeles. one. Yeah, right. Oh my God. Yeah. So <laughs> and then BA, I had to film something and I started, I was, I kept humming it out loud. Cause I'm like working with a tripod or something and I just start doing it, not thinking. Wow. And the second I see you, John, <laughs> That's I start so singing rad. that. Wait, which one? Rad. Which one did you do to Brian Anderson? Um, his uh, "Welcome to Hell" song. Oh, okay. We don't need no education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so good. I have to thank Aaron for that. Aaron Mesa, he chose that song, so it definitely resonated with me after the fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I was definitely aware of Mary J. But dude, yeah, that definitely that's that song. soundtrack. That whole Ooh. video. That's like one of my most watched videos as a, like a kid and like in my twenties. It just gives me that feeling of like being. You know, you're super excited about skating like all the time in that video, just like the music. It was so weird at first, you know, it was like music that kind of challenged like what everybody else was using yeah. at the time. Yeah. You had that heel, the heel flip down the, the EMB four and you just land and put your, put your arms down. <laughs> 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 Bringing back memories, bro. I love God, that, man. That, that's Amazing. rad how that, that, finally an FTC video. Yeah. 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 Iconic, man. Crazy. Chico with the, uh. That song that he what song did he, he did, uh, his was Sade yeah, yeah. yeah. Smooth, yeah. Operator. Smooth, yeah. Operator. Smooth Operator Smooth yeah. Operator yeah yeah that's yeah. right that's right when Cairo was here I, the whole I was just singing like a <laughs> that's a whole day I was singing that amazing I don't know what the hell you're talking about what. <laughs> Fully flare, dude. Fully flare. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, 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 now. But you do that into an app and tell now, you a song now, now, now. it is. They'll probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Josh, it sounds, just sounds just like it. Now, 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 now. <laughs> Cairo got it right away. Yeah, he, he, was he like, got oh, it. Right, right, right. I saw that one. So how are you, dude? Good. Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, I waited all year to go visit. You know, my family back in Florida. Just my mom, you know, my mom's in her seventies and never, sure. you know, everybody's a lot of people fled immediately. So my girlfriend and I stayed here for a long time. And then we finally, in for Christmas, we drove down and visited everybody and, and we just ended up staying for like three months. So wow. we got a nice little, uh, you know, warm vacation for a while. Okay. You don't have any pets? No. Oh, what about we the, who watered, who watered the plant? Um, actually several, I called in several favors okay. <laughs> yeah. for one plant. Yeah. He's like, I need this plant water, but you could have taken that plant with you. man. Well, my girlfriend's got like a little mini jungle in the, okay. In the it looks room. hydrated, dude. It does yeah. look hydrated. It looks yeah. very healthy. <laughs> very well taken care very of. Well taken care <laughs> of. <laughs> yes. You use, uh, what are those? Miracle grow? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't use any. Really? I, These things, it was crazy because we like Taylor Naraki was like the first dude who, who I called in the favor and then. 
our sales guy, Mike Newton came by like multiple times. And then it was just like, we couldn't, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't call any more favors. And it, we kept, we have a, my girlfriend set up a, uh, you know, like a ring camera kind of thing that we could check on our phone. And she, every day she's like, Oh my God, you see the plants are getting worse and worse. Oh. And that's why we came back. Like when we did, we, oh. I wanted to stay, I was skating so much in Tampa or Tampa and St. Pete. My mom lives in St. Pete mm. now. And, um, I haven't skated as much this year. I've skated more than I have in 10 years. And, wow. and being down there, it's just like, I didn't want to leave. I was having so much fun sk skating. Wow. So. But the plants needed you. The plants yeah. needed you. Yeah. Damn, that ring, that ring camera's dangerous, man. I have a cat, Larry. Oh, yeah. And uh, I have the ring. I got the, no, it's the, uh, the Nest, the Nest, the Nest camera. All right. And I tell you what, man, like I will just tune into, it'll, you know, it'll, it'll spot her walking around or something. And then like, I'll tune in and she'll just be sitting at the door, waiting. staring at the door, waiting. Oh. Uh, and like, talk about a heartbreak. Oh. Wherever I am, I'm like, oh my God, dude. Uh. Like my cat is just sitting at the door waiting for me to get home. It's yep. so sad. He's waiting for food. Yeah, of course. That's, that's but amazing. still yeah, it's like, oh my God, it's just that, 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 that. I try not to look at it anymore. We're going to have to give you yeah. one of those automated feeders. I had so one. You did? Oh, you did. I had one. Well, that you didn't... did have one? What I happened had to it? One. It wasn't that good because it's the kibble, right? Mm -hmm. You can't put moist food in them. Do you oh. do moist and hard? Like, yeah. In kibble? I do the kibble. <laughs> moist. Okay. Yeah. I do the moist in the morning, little, little, uh, little, uh, you know, little kibble during the day. Okay. And then the moist at night. Okay. I can see the subtitle on this episode on the, like the, <laughs> the blurb moist. Or oh, whatever. Kibble. What, what kibble. Did you just say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kibble. Listen, I have a plant named Hank also in the Miracle Grow has done wonders. That it's almost touching the ceiling now. It's a fucking plant. You should so, take yeah. some notes from Josh. He sounds like him yeah, and his wife are doing like they're doing. If I ever leave, I'm gonna call in a favor. There you go. There you go. Roger actually takes good care of the foliage. Roger is yeah, randomly a really good uh, he's, good. he's got a good green thumb. Yeah, good green thumb. I come over, the plants are all outside, like lined up. Like, yeah, spraying them and yeah, watering them. Totally. Dude, remember when he had like the, the light in here? Always? Oh my God. We'd walk in, there's this purple light, Josh, that's like the growing light. Oh, wow. I didn't think it worked too well. Is that for those plants, though? I don't know. What are growing plants? a lot of weed here. <laughs> yeah, <Roger. laughs> Uh, unbelievable. And a few different things in here. But that's what I'm saying. Like we should get fake plants because and we anyway we're talking about the yeah. foliage in our house. Yeah. yeah. This is what the kids want to. <laughs> this is what they, they want to know about. about. Yeah. Listen, yeah. Sure. We gotta we gotta suck them in before we talk about the good shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you do it. Huh? This is how you do it, man. <laughs> Uh, so then you're back, you were three months in Florida, skated the most you've ever skated in ten years. Back in New York, right? How? how? Yep not skating anymore right or what's going on <laughs> well back to reality with work and stuff i mean we, we've been working remotely since i think in september we closed our office mm -hmm. um just because we left you know nobody wanted to work in the same same mm -hmm. building together and uh closed our office and put everything in a storage unit so um but there's just oh, like you so closed much... your office completely down yeah you got yeah. out of there mm -hmm. now wait a minute we're talking about theories of atlantis right Right. The distribution right. you have out there. Now, are you, you don't ship, do you ship stuff out of there? No, not usually. We, we, sometimes we manage like uh web orders and stuff, but um, mm -hmm. we're, we, we use a third party uh, logistics company out in Long Island. It's the guys at uh, Chapman skateboards mm -hmm. they've been around oh. forever. Um, and they're, they're good dudes. And they, uh, they, Jamal Williams used to um, use them for hops, like to warehouse and ship and stuff back in the day. And he, you know, he kind of kept telling me, he, he'd see me like I'd hand delivered board boxes to like KCDC and labor, sure. like on my bike or literally like carrying like 20, 20 boards on my shoulder. Oh and my gosh. Um, when it was just me doing it, you know, and he's like, dude, you got to just like use, you know, to hit these guys up. And then totally. so they've been, they've, they've been uh, fulfilling for us for probably like, nine years eight years or something like that so, oh, so nice. okay wow yeah so, it's, it's awesome but it's frustrating because they're an hour away so right. it's like one of those things where you're just like you know you know you have 12 of this one thing and the warehouse is saying no we have eight and then you're like you can't just like walk through a door and go uh, and out. come on i know they're there you know so that's that's the only like drawback do you go out there often I, we used to go there all the time like twice at least twice a month um sometimes more but uh they have a new system 
that is like a, you know, like a, they did, we didn't have like a, a barcoding, you know, mm. like scan in system sure. there for a long time. And they implemented it last year and it's, it's like made everything a lot smoother. So we don't go out. The, actually, if we go out there, we screw things up now. Oh, it used okay. to be like, oh, yeah. like literally they're just like, no, you can't. They, I'm sure that it used to annoy them when we went out there, you know, but now it's like, they're just like, no, straight up. Just don't, don't even come because you're yeah. just going to fuck well, everything up. I know up. you're an East Coast distribution, but listen, man, you should use Mike Mo. He's uh, He's yeah, got a whole iPads and, and that's what we, we use yeah. in Geron- Like, Oh, really? Dude, yeah. he's on got it. A system? Yeah, they, he's got a like, whole system. They got a good setup over there, that's for sure. Like we're barcoding stuff here, driving it up there so that we could have everything. Okay. He, he, he's, talk about logistics, man. He's on it. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's such a crazy like it, if you maybe even until like six, seven years ago, you know, the idea of like logistics and just how complicated and how much of a mess like when we ship an order and, and somebody gets shorted something or it seems like such a bonehead thing, you know, like how the hell did you ship me there in when you when it gets to, you know, we have nine brands and then we carry all kinds of like people's DVDs and stuff like that. It gets to be like there's like 4,000 different SKUs in the, in a warehouse, you know, wow. and just it yeah. becomes such a mess that, you know, a company like, like Chapman, like have, they had to get that system because right. it's just, yeah. and they fulfill for a lot of other people too. So talk about having a good a business without even having to almost touch the product. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, right. it's good and bad. Cause awesome. when we like originally, you know, this was just a website that I was doing for fun, you know, sure. and, slowly as i was you know adding i'd carry dvds from like my friends videos it's mostly dvds and stuff and then i started making shirts but all the stuff that i was selling like everything i did i was sending i was handling it myself so it had that personal touch right um, and i would send you know like i had all these uh, contact sheets from photography stuff so i'd cut those up and write notes to people Amazing. and you got to like really you know know the customers right. so you lose a lot of that what i'm sure you guys are you know we familiar with that same too thing. yeah so yeah. we just throw and, stickers in there and raj would throw in whatever was around here just to, as, yeah. a, as a bonus that personal touch yeah totally totally so the, get- I, like i'm friends with those guys that weekend and they're yeah. you know they're always like they still have that ability you know so they i've had them they've shipped a box to us and they're just like it, they have like they've written you know like Stuff they've co- found like embarrassing photos of us, us on the internet printed them out and glued them to the amazing. box you know oh, like it's amazing. so rad yeah. so that's so that's amazing. why we do a lot some of the f- the web fulfillment from here whenever like for the smaller stuff just so we can still have right. personal connection what do you do when you get new product in though do you have like don't you want to see it when it comes in or do you just go out there when it comes in basically we have a we have a box of one of everything shipped to us Ooh, here now right. oh, okay yeah. nice when we moved out of our out of our office, we, this building, it's a building, um, our friend Pep, uh, who does Christie, uh, NYC, it's a Mm. apparel brand. Um, he's in the same building (laughs) as us, but we moved out and then we had a storage unit in the basement and it's like a 130 year old building. Like it used to be like an old telephone switchboard building or something. So we have this, there's a super sketchy basement down there that floods like off and on. And like, um, so we just, we store stuff down there. So every time, and it's a, it's like a half hour bike ride for me. So like today, that's what I biked out there. We got boards, shot all the boards, put everything, and I'm setting it all up in this basement where I'm not paying to use, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> in New York city, like sure. people pay for a studio, you know, like you rent a studio for the day and pay like top dollar right. and I'm in this sketchy basement, like trying to hurry before the landlord catches me shooting <laughs> that, like flashes and everything. Um, yeah. So. That's amazing, dude. We have a, a new brand called Picture Show, and we did the whole, like, a studio shoot. I was like, oh, we'll just do it in one night. And, the, you know, we did it late at night. And I was like, nobody's going to catch us down here. And then it ended up taking, like, five full days, like, eight hours a day to shoot all of it. Oh, so we took – they just have these empty rooms in the basement, and we just fully, like – just late at night on the weekends, just shot, like, not wow. all day. Wow. And I love it, dude. Get caught. That's dope. <laughs> it went smooth, though, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's this funny um, – I kept hearing when I was there alone, I'd start hearing this woman's voice in, in the, in the basement. What's crazy is there was one night I was taking stuff down to the basement and I walked down there and there was, there were bloody footprints going down all the steps. Yeah, right. Okay. I was like, there's no way this is blood, you know? And then I got down there and there was a big pool of blood, probably like three feet in circumference and then drop, 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 big drop, big drop. And then uh, somebody's storage unit. And these are like like a storage unit. It's like a brick wall with like a steel door from like 
it looks like it's from like 1900, you know? Mm-hmm. Wow. And there was a pool of blood coming out from his oh, storage unit. Oh yeah. And um, so I didn't know what to do, you know? And I was like, I know the guy who has that storage unit. And so I texted people who knew him. They're like, I haven't seen him in like a day or two. Oh. You know? And so I, you know, texted my girlfriend. I was like, what should we do? And she's like, she thinks everything's like a, you know, like a murder. So she was just like, well, you have to call the, call the police right now. You know, like in a, and I, sh- I sent everybody photos and it was gnarly, you know, and no way. ended up basically, I was like, I'm not calling the, you know, if this dude, cause it was like, he might've killed somebody that could be in that storage unit. Yeah. There's blood pooling out from it. Like literally like, like p- a pool of blood. No and, um, and anyways, it ended up, I got in touch with him through a friend and he had, he has like, he does like, um, he repairs stuff down there and he dropped this big metal plate on his forehead oh. and it cut his forehead really bad. But he's this huge, like Australian, like, like beast. Okay. And he's just like, fuck it. And just kept working all night <laughs> and just bled out everywhere Wow. and ended up getting like, <laughs> like dizzy and sick and went home and slept yeah. it off for like a long time. And he, and then he came back and cleaned it up after, but I just stumbled. I'm glad on this he woke up, scene. dude. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Blood foot. Oh my God. Yeah. Just in a basement. Yeah. Like that's a scary. It didn't it's clean it shot. up. Yeah. Like just didn't. He got lightheaded because think, he lost so much blood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think he thought he could, he could manage it. And then he realized like he was, he needed to go I mean, do can, something can about it. Wrap it up. He's, I could just, I just picture him just, you know, Ugh. big gash, just bloody, not. Yeah. But whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like one of those guys you know that just like he always has grease all over his hands he's he doesn't you know he doesn't wow. he doesn't care man, some yeah. stitches who cares yeah. mike wow yeah yeah so you're in there shooting all the stuff but listen are you going to move back into an office when all this is said and done or yeah you, you, yeah. You, yeah i think, yeah, you so. think so it's like it, it's tough because we can work remotely but right. um there's just so many things like like a meeting to have a meeting on, you know, like a, Oh, we have to have a meeting about this, you know, video or this project. And it's like these countless zoom calls and G chat, you know, it's like to be able to just say, Hey Mike, you know, yeah. When's that aisle shipment, you know? Oh, okay. It's going to be tomorrow. Cool. So it, it, and it just like get us out of the house. I, cause when we first started TOA, it was in our, in the back of our apartment. Okay. And it was there for seven years. We had it in that apartment. And it was just right. like, always you wake up and then literally there's like a door two feet from my bed. And then the office, this is like a door that doesn't even have a top, you know, like, oh, like no. it doesn't meet the ceiling. So it's just like this non-separation constantly from work. And so when we got an office, finally, it was such a nice, you know, separation. You could go, Definitely. you got to separate the two. It's more inspiring. Yeah. Right. I feel like that's what it was like here. Yeah, you know, like with Roger, right. especially Roger living right here, then dealing with all the stuff. Sure, it's like you got to get out of here for a little, you know. So how's the the distribution going though? Like you 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 distribute? What'd you say? Nine brands. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what? Isle. Let's give let's give a little rundown. You got Isle, okay. Paul Shire, amazing. Nick Jensen. Those guys are killing it. Yeah, they're the best. It's actually kind of the best brand. If you look at their team, it's like the sickest team. Bro. Like most unique and sickest team in my opinion you know like, they put, yeah they put out some of the best videos too yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah Definitely. and they're just I mean, legends and, yeah and shire's the best everybody loves paul shire's, does he call you seriously. up complaining about stuff ever mm, no okay. no okay just making sure i'm trying to think of some way to pick on him but. I, always, <laughs> I always trip out how he runs the brand being in los angeles and it's such like a london-based brand right i know it's, but well, nick's yeah. in london right yeah Paul's out here, mm-hmm. but that's a nine hour difference, you know, totally. So that's like, and he's got a, a and, family too. And he works for yeah. Adidas yeah. and he works for Adidas. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Okay. Well, we're not getting into Paul Shire's whole yeah. life. <laughs> so you got Paul shot. You got a aisle. I think you talk about Paul every episode. I just know the last two episodes I listened to. You he's guys amazing. Mentioned. I mean, yeah. don't we all love Paul Shire? I think that's true. I need more yeah. Paul Shire in my life. I saw he bleached his hair. Did you see that? Dude, no, no way. Yeah, I just saw he just posted an Instagram clip of him skating. Oh you my see god. He's got blonde hair under his hat. There you go. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta check that out. <laughs> yeah. Uh um, and I'm sure you so distribute Isle. Isle, and I'm sure you distribute yeah. your own brand, right? Uh right. Theories of Atlantis, right? TOA, theories. as you call it. Theories. Oh, it's not yeah. did you drop the uh, of Atlantis? The distributorship is called Theories of Atlantis. And so when we started doing like t-shirts and stuff like that. 
a million years ago, we just started, oh, we'll just call that theories, you know? Gotcha. So it's, little bit of a separation. But, yeah. Nobody knows that there's a difference. Gotcha. You know? I like that. Um, it's good. Thanks. Um, so I'm sure you distribute that, right? Does that count as one Correct. of your brands? Yes. Okay. Uh, what else do you distribute? Hops? Um, hops. Hops. Yep. Amazing. Uh, yes. Uh, hops was, uh, we always wanted to have hops under, because Jamal, you know, I've been working with Jamal on everything with, with hops for years and, and wanted to have it under the TOA, Man. you know, umbrella. But then they became part of TOA officially about three years ago, I think. Amazing. We nice. were helping distribute it, but, you know, we're like, he's like, we're, he's part of the team, you know, basically Sick. now. So, yeah. And then uh, traffic. Traffic. Dope. Right. Dope. Um, Magenta. Magenta. France. Yes. Mm-hmm. Magenta's awesome. They were the first brand we distributed, basically. Yeah, because you can you you you've you've taken overseas brands and really brought them brought them here. Yeah. Which is amazing. that's kind of how it started, right. really. Right. Yeah. Because the Magenta guys, I was working. I did a part with everybody. Kind of is like people I did parts with, video parts with, mm-hmm. and static videos. Really, is kind of how it all played out but um so soy and vivian the two guys who own it um you know did parts with with both of them and they were i was working with on a part with vivian for static four when Mm. they started magenta so that's how that happened okay um yeah and then um where are we at so those the isle magenta um then evison out of japan oh really Um, yeah damn i went out there i was tripping i mean i didn't really know about it until i went there and i was like wow this is like a really dope brand out here. Yeah. It's a sick brand. They're awesome. Yeah. Their team is, it's like, they did a really sick video um, about a year and a half ago. And I had, I actually, you know, still wasn't aware of how amazing that their team is. But, um, you know, and the guy, the the owner um, was, a, is like a skate video maker who made like rad skate videos. And they're all like, you know, like all hands on dudes who are involved in making rad stuff Sick. before they even started their brand yeah um so that's evison uh what else hops, <laughs> hops <laughs> Isle, magenta dial tone evison yeah dial tone is dial a, tone a wheel brand wheel brand that we started yeah about three years ago okay and um and then picture show is our newest brand uh it's a board brand picture show uh, and we just had a like a thrasher edit go up uh, about Three weeks ago, I don't Should know if I've heard homework. of that. Maybe we. I, I don't yeah, know what's we what's that one? What's uh? What's Should I have assigned homework before this? <laughs> well, you could <laughs> tell us. You could tell us all yeah. about this. Perfect timing. <laughs> wow. Let me think. Is that? I'm, I'm, did we count? Okay, no, we didn't count. Let me see. We got. <laughs> no, I think that was nine. No, no, no. I, think, like I think it's like, like seven or so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> traffic, traffic, hops, hops, theories, theories, theories dial tone, Davison. Picture show, Evison. Yeah, oh, yeah, it is nine. That's eight. That's eight. That's eight. That's oh my! What's God. the last one, Josh? Bro, so to, get out your oh, little you email and see. Oh, studio, and studio, studio. There we go. Yeah, there studio is actually the most recent brand that we we took on. Okay, um, those guys are are awesome. We we were carrying their stuff on our web store for a while. It's it's like, you know, the kind of the, it wasn't some like grand scheme. You know, like mm. oh, this is how it's going to be this perfect blend <laughs> of you know, international brands and but it just like organically started like shire started isle and it was like of course we have to carry that you know sure. vivian and soy started magenta um and then at a certain point it was like it's rad to try to represent you know have representation for brands that are doing like kind of underground and interesting stuff totally uh, yeah. overseas or you know canada this is right there you know and, and it doesn't you know actually girl <laughs> has had some amazing uh, Canadian talent, you know, obviously, mm-hmm. um, with, uh, its owner, uh, uh, as well, but, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Rick. you know, Canada in the United States, Canada didn't, I don't feel like ever got enough love or attention sure, for their scene. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Right. Right. Now they're right. killing it, but, dude. You know, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Especially with dime coming but out. That was the same thing, sure. you know, it's like, like, uh, with the UK and stuff, like going, working on static two mm. and going out there and just like, you that was still an era you know early 2000s you know you the only like international stuff you saw aside from like penny and flip you know 
was like the four one one like international mm-hmm. reports, which yeah. sure. they were always filmed like on PAL and tra- and transcoded to right. you know it's just always like murky video that you're just like oh and there's like terrible music because <laughs> yeah, yeah. they'd always give put some like weird French rap to like you know the French stuff and they just got it never got portrayed right and so I, yeah. I agree so did you ever, no yeah, for sure did you guys ever watch the puzzle videos yeah I saw a couple of those puzzle videos yeah yeah I used to watch those they when, they were so palled out that you're it just it was, it was, Maybe that's it was why it wasn't appealing because of the the yeah. shitty footage and the, the music. Like, <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, right? Yeah, it was nothing, dope. Nothing, though. I, I love the skaters. I, nothing but, again. I'm just yeah. saying, like back then. Yeah, it was. I think there was some ethnocentrism kind of going on too in the U.S. You know, like people like you didn't want to like nothing outside of the U.S. was cool for a really long time in skateboarding. That was totally yeah. 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 Very far few in between. Yeah, very selective in, in who we really very, pay attention to. Very right. selected yeah. people would come out of there, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like a little bit of Brazil, little bit of, little bit of Canada, a yeah. couple people from Europe. and Yeah, it was like Moses Sakonin and like... Yeah, Colin like McKay. Carl, Colin yeah, McKay. Yeah, yeah, Carl Shipman. Carl yeah, there's Shipman. A, there's Carl a few dudes that were know, definitely... Tom like, Penny. That stood out. Yeah. Penny. Penny, like, Rose, he, like, sure. knocked the doors down, though. Ooh, he was, yeah. like, there was nobody. Like, there was, it's so crazy how there's, like, there's always, like, a, amazing talent, but then there's these these individuals, like, you get one every, like, five years or so that is just so, like, on a different plane. And yeah. I just, it's weird because when you try to talk to kids who are, like, shit, like, 30 or younger now, you can't like to try to explain what Penny was like how insanely like incredible and unique his skating was. It's like a myth. It's like this legend who mm-hmm. you would just see. It's like the unicorn, right? You just yeah. you never see him, but when you do, You're it's like, like magical. Yeah. Dude, Damn. today's his yeah. birthday randomly. Hey, happy birthday. No Tom. way. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. But it's amazing though. You'll see these younger kids come around. I see them around here. You'll see these kids that just emulate his style. Like they they love Penny mm. and they, hmm. they'll wear, they'll dress like Penny from back in the day. Hmm. And wow. I, 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 I love that because they're doing their homework. Right. You know what right, I mean? Right. I, I just, there are those kids. Like the keeping, there are those kids. Yeah. keeping it alive, yeah. you know? Crazy to think that uh, Andy Anderson and Tom Penny had the same birthday. Tom Penny and Tim Olson. Wow. Oh wow! Tim's birthday. Too? Tim's birthday today. Wow. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday, Timmy, Andy, and Tommy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, incredible. <laughs> um, but they're all those kids. I mean, like I look at the same thing that you're talking about right now is like a Tiago, right? Right. This guy. Right. There's so there's so much talent out there, but that this guy Tiago comes in and you're like. Oh, wow. Such yeah. an anomaly. Uh, yeah. Different level, different shit. You're just yeah. like, this guy's phenomenal. Yeah. He wow. It's rad too because he's just like a nice, like, seems like an, I, I don't know him personally, but he seems like a really nice, humble, like, you know, good dude. That's exactly. Totally. Right there. Sure. Completely is. And lets the skating do, do the talking. Yeah. And loves yeah. the past. Yeah. Does the, you know, I think he, right. he just loves it. The Penny thing though, to me, it, he was such a, like a, a character he was like like you said there was so much mystery to this guy that was like you know he didn't talk he didn't seem to talk right. you know what i mean and yeah like, there was just no so interview st- stuff back then either yeah you just see yeah. a photo or video yeah of him skating totally did you Go see ahead. him at tampa back in the day yeah i'm i like dude like paul zitzer was i was like good friends with him um back then he lived in tampa and Paul was kind of like, I think I mentioned this in the last <laughs> nine club episode, okay. but he kind of like, I feel like he was like the barometer. He he was my barometer for what was cool. You know what I mean? Like I was younger. I was like five years younger than Paul maybe. Mm. Um, and he, uh, he's just so funny and, and had like, uh, to me, he had good taste and he would always be like, oh, you know, Tom Penny, you have to like this dude is, and he was Tom's biggest fan. So when Tom came to, he came to Tampa for a, um, uh, Oh God! What was that brand? What was the brand he and Donnie Barley rode for? And um, it was a clothing brand. And Jordan Richter. What? So TSA? Random. Not TSA. TSA. Oh, it was yeah. TSA. TSA. Yeah. Oh, TSA. Yeah. Damn. There was a random TSA demo at, at the skate park in Tampa, and then I think a week or ten days later, there was a pro contest. So they came and did a demo, and that's when t- I think that's when t- Tom had a broken hand, and he skated the demo and just did like no flip tricks for like an hour. But his, his hand was like, it looked like a balloon. It looked like a, oh. like a prop from a movie. And then he just decided to start going in. And I was like, 
the, I didn't care how annoying I was. I just followed him everywhere, everywhere he went. I filmed everything he tried and did that whole day. And then he came, I think they went somewhere like down, you know, like down South for like the week and then came back for Tampa pro. And it was the same thing I filmed. He like switched back lip the handrail, which never seen anybody do that ever. Oh. And I filmed, he probably did it 30 times. I filmed every single one. I was there with the fish. <laughs> I, just like anything he did. I just thought he was the sickest, like most, you know, Wow. The, the most dude, unique dude a, out. That was, like, you, that was like 96 or something, right? Yeah, I think so. Where is this footage? I've put, I actually put all of it on uh, our YouTube channel. Oh, you yeah. have? Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, just like, it was like something like, you know, Unseen Tom Penny. Okay. I know, oh, whatever. I've probably seen all of it then on Cult of Tom. Right, right. I've, it's like he was doing like, you know, just the classic every single you know, the classic Penny tricks. Front side over flip, that pyramid. kickflip shifties, all that stuff. He did wow. the nollie. He did nollie back some eighty melon. I don't even. I don't know my grabs. I'm, yeah, I'm, me neither. I filmed so much vert in my when I was younger. I should know all of it. But <laughs> nollie one eighty stale fish or nollie. But he did nollie back some eighty stale fish wow. over the pyramid and came back and did. He was. But yeah, Sick. yeah. What a crazy time back then, dude. I know. It's cool that you knew to follow him. Yeah, thankfully. Yeah, thankfully at the yeah. time he actually. I've, uh, you guys might, it, when I start telling stories I've already told, just stop me because I'm... No, no yeah, you're good. They're, they're great, like, man. I've told this uh, during the pro contest, you know, he was, I'd already been like obsessing over him the whole time he was there. And then uh, during somebody's run, I looked over and he was, that's when the vert ramp was still inside the indoor, you know, skate park at Tampa sure. Park. And he was over on the vert ramp and he was rolling up to the coping by himself, like looking over the... And it, like he was going to try something <laughs> like, and I started into, I was, from the, from the yeah. deck into the vert ramp. Yeah. And so just by himself. And so I'm like trying, you know how those contests are. It's like, you're, it's like being in like Disney world and trying to get, you yeah. know, just to get like right there takes like, you know, this, all this like climbing over people. And I was like, Oh my, get me over there. Get me over there. And he rolled up, he took a push and tried to nollie backside flip into the vert ramp to fakie what? off the flat. Perfect, like first try, Nolly Flip catches it, carries it down and kicks it away and runs backwards down the ramp and then starts going up the stairs. And I'm trying just like clawing through people to try to get over that, to be able to film him try it. And he tried one more, same thing. Like he could, could have put it down, but kicked it away and then just like left or whatever. What? Could you imagine, you imagine? Nolly backside flipping from <laughs> the deck <laughs> into vert ramp. Yeah, landing into the transition. With no, and, like, and running backwards yeah. down the vert ramp. Just like, by, not yourself. Even, by yourself. Like dude. not even slamming. <laughs> Yeah. Like running out of it. Oh, that's more almost just as impressive, right? It's like getting out of it. Again, I had a, it for there free. was another weird um <laughs> I was at that some park in San Diego and he Tony Hawk was skating. Just another one of those as a filmer, just you find yourself sometimes in these just random ass places. And Tony Hawk was skating a vert ramp outside and Muska ended up he was on the deck. I think I have I put I used the clip in something, but and, uh, and then Tom Penny starts skating for, with him with no pads. And Tom's doing like, he does full cabs. He did that and he was trying to do nollie backside flip on the, like, on vert. So he was like at the, tra at, the at coping. So he was coming up and trying to do nollie backside flip and come back in. Um, but it's just sick because it's him, Muska, and Tony Hawk Tony skating Hawk. together. <laughs> and Tony does a line. And he lands, and as he hops out, Muska's there, and he and, and has the classic kid on, and everything. It's so probably I think ninety five. Oh, wow. and gives him a high five. It's so sick. Wow, it's funny because I I feel like every skater from like our generation has a Tom Penny story. Mm. You know, it's just it's like classic. I just watched it, dude. I just watched everything from afar. I, I've met him once. Yeah, I don't. Do you have any Tom Penny stories? Yeah, I tell it all the time, man. He knew my name. I <laughs> oh. couldn't believe it. <laughs> no, but I do have one that was when we were at MACBA, we were all sitting around. I'll tell it quickly. We were all sitting around. You know, MACBA, you could, you, you're chilling in kind of groups. There's like yeah, one, yeah. one up there. And then when we were chilling kind of by the street area, we we're all hanging in Danny LeBron, his suit, whatever, and, uh, and Tom. And, uh, you know, MACBA's a circus. Circus. Yeah. Just crazy. So you go up into MACBA and there's that, the ramp that goes up. Right. Tom Penny gets up, skates, you know, just like this nonchalant over to the, the little ramp thing, does a all these up and does a manual. I swear to God, this sounds ridiculous. The whole MacBa stops. You know when you know those like TV shows or movies where <laughs> yeah. 
It's going, that person's going in real time, but everybody else is oh, frozen yeah. <laughs> around and like slow-mo looking. Soccer balls are in the air, like <laughs> slow-mo. Like slow I swear to God, he ollied up there. I, everybody turned and watched him. And he just went around and manualed and landed. And right when he landed, I swear, it was like, like back. It was back to normal. <laughs> Everybody's just waiting for him to do anything. It was, <laughs> I swear to God. What year I was I can't that? explain this. You remember what year that was? I don't know. That's when you were living out there for three months? Or yeah. yeah. Just to, I'll tie in the, um, our previous uh, guy we were talking about with the current, um, I was at South Bank in London randomly, probably, this is, after I, I I have to base everything in my life on static videos. You know what I mean? Because I know <laughs> sure. I have a bad memory, so I just remember the date, the year each one came out. So this is probably two thousand five, I think. Okay. After static, what? This is after Static Two had come out. Okay. Because I was, but for some reason I was in London and hanging out with Shire, and I can't remember who else. But there was like a whole the whole squad, like this dude Jake Sawyer, who's um like uh awesome dude and seth curtis i'm trying to remember it doesn't matter anyways yeah. all these local dudes like london locals who worked at slam city and stuff and we're just like oh let's go to this let's go get dinner and we're walking and tom penny was at south bank and we're walking and i'm and i'd seen paul shire talking to tom and then we're walking and tom's walking kind of back and i was like dude there's no way he's coming with us is he and then as we keep getting he he ends up joining up and he, him and paul are talking and, and then we get to the restaurant and he comes in. I'm like, holy shit, I'm going to eat dinner with Tom Penny. <laughs> and it's this place called Wagamama and they have these really long, it's like the style where you sit at a really long picnic table, you know, so you just, you don't have your own tables. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So we sat in a group and Tom set like eight people, the distance of like eight to 10 people away for some oh. reason. So we're all sitting here. He just sat way down there. And I don't know why, maybe he felt uncomfortable, but he's friends with Paul. So that's why he came with. So anyways, we're eating and I ordered a, gyozas Mm -hmm. and this is my only like personal one-on-one tom penny story and uh i haven't shared any i haven't spoken a word to him and i get my gyozas and i'm like all right i get my little chopsticks and i just get ready to pick it up and i feel a presence and i turn and it's just tom and he's standing right over my shoulder and he's like this he's like what's that it's a it's a gyoza and he's like and i was like do you want one he's like (laughs) <laughs> and he just handed him a gyoza and he ate the, ate the gyoza and he, I can't remember, he said something, just like one word, like something like, mm, and then just went back and sat down. <laughs> it was so bizarre. Like he had to see what it was. He had yeah. to know what it was. Yeah. yeah. I hadn't even been introduced to him. He just at like, like he a took ghost your food. just appeared. That's he was amazing. just right there. But he took That's your so food. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Isn't that funny, man? Tom Penny, bro. Tom Penny. Eating the gyozas. <laughs> In London <laughs> with Paul Shire, Josh Stewart. Wow. So good. What did he have? Did you, did you see what he I, ordered? I have no, no idea. I don't even think he ate, to be honest. He just ate your just out there. But he, you were in the group and he was sitting eight people away from you. Yeah. Like away, not just eight people, but like. Right. There was no people of, between me and him. He just, for some reason, sat really oh, far away. There was yeah. no one sitting there. No, it was an empty bench. Wow. There was pl- he could have sat right next to me the whole time, you know? And that's oh. what I was exp- I was like, oh shit, Tom Penny's going to sit next to me. But it's it was strange. Social but distancing. Still- yeah, I was about to say social distancing early on. <laughs> yeah. Early on. <laughs> <laughs> that is so bizarre. Such a good Wait, dude. did he go love, back? Love and, Tom Penny. Did he go back and sit far away after? That's my memory. That's what I remember is he went back, but I don't. So he came and I, gave I, your gyoza and then went wow. back eight and feet. out. So yeah. man of mystery. Man of mystery. Yeah. Bro. That's why everybody's <laughs> that's a good story. Dude. That's why everybody's oh, yeah. got a Tom Penny story. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. You don't have a Tom Penny story? I don't have one. No. You don't see him around you see me like at the contest back in the day and stuff? Yeah. That's I weird. mean it's very, very casual. Like, you know, it's like, hey, what's up? You know? Did, yeah. did yeah. you Keep trip out on him when you saw him? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Did a lot of people in your age like trip? I tripped out on him just like how you did in a sense of like, hey, what's up, Jerome? Like, and I'm like, oh shit, what's up? He knows dude? my name. <laughs> it's good, dude. Right. That's <laughs> you know? tight. That's a crazy thing because he's all the way over there. Yeah. Right. He's, you know, and then you see him. And you're like, this dude doesn't know who I am. Right. And then I just recently saw him, I think it was in Copenhagen, probably maybe five years ago, mm. give or take. Um, so it was good to see him because I hadn't seen him for yeah. quite some time, you know, but still ripping and still, yeah. That's a, a funny, um, similar thing. Uh, maybe 10 years ago, Bobby Puglio and I were sitting in the middle of this park in Brooklyn um, and 
we just see, <laughs> see this dude walking, walking through the park. There's like sidewalks to go around, but there's this dude cutting through like the baseball diamonds and he's like walking towards us, like really far away. And he had like a, a crazy fedora on, like in a, in a crazy kit. And I, I can't remember, but I just remember Bobby said something about the dude's outfit. And then like, you know, you, like a few more minutes you look and he's getting closer and you're like, it looks like he's coming towards us. And then Bob's like, holy shit. He's like, that's fucking Chad Fernandez. Oh, and Chad, wow. and I'm like, what? And I was like, no way. And then he's, he's coming, coming and he's, he's making eye contact. He was coming. Like he was coming for us that whole time. <laughs> and he walks up and he's like, what's up, Bob? And, and new Bobby, you know, and I was like, Hey, I'm a big fan. And then he turned to me and he said, I love the static videos. <laughs> I was like, what? what? That's amazing. What is going on? First of all, Chad Fernandez in Brooklyn. And Random. then the fact that he like, he went out, you know, and it changes. I've had several of those where you kind of like, you know, you have this, pre, you prejudge people and then, you, you know what I mean? And then they changed and you're like, dude, that's rad. This dude yeah. just like went out of his way, came over here, said, what's up. Did he walk back through the diamond? <laughs> it's like, okay, I gotta go. I said, came to say hi. It was like a short interaction too. And then he was just off in the distance, you know, like, like you remember that uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail scene? I was just going to say that. Where they, they, I was it just going to say that. It keeps repeating. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We was like standing, running in place. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Oh man! But those are those um, are fun moments, right? And yeah. plus, as a, as a as a filmmaker too, like you probably don't expect to be recognized, no. right? Well, especially I'm not just like a you know film, video maker guy, but I've always felt like I'm in most of my life was in Florida, right. and even if somebody if if by chance somebody had seen one of my videos or or even liked it. I was like, there's, they're not going to make the connection. It's just so random when somebody does, you know, especially on the West coast, sure. you know, cause I always sure. felt like people who might be a fan of a static, you know, there's like, it's like if they're most likely going to be East coaster. And, and I always felt like, well, they're mostly going to like it cause it's East coast, you know, not because they, it's good or, you know what I mean? How you, but when you like the West coast guys, when you have those interactions with them, it's like, especially cause I grew up in that era too, where the West coast was, everything was out of California. Sure, you know? So yeah. like, right. Jerron, did you ever come to Tampa? I was thinking about that. Did you ever skate a uh, Tampa demo or anything? Yeah, definitely. A couple of times. Yeah. A couple of times. And then I entered the contest a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can't, rem- cause there was like a couple, I can't remember if, if it was a girl chocolate or just a girl demo. It was like, one I think of the it was really demos. early on. I'm telling you, it probably, dude, it was probably like, one of the first like us trips i would imagine um that i could vaguely remember but yeah dude i definitely remember like doing 94 probably like that. was yeah. it the one with the firm that could possibly be the one that's oh. yeah yeah, yeah that, that was, might be it yeah i, I remember know. guy was there he was the, the, he was the tom penny for me for that one oh, i was man. like where i was chasing yeah, him around me. everywhere sure. um, but yeah. like the the girl guys like like we always, obviously, you know, the East Coast, uh, you know, in Flo- some East Coast, a lot of East Coasters on the Northeast, they don't consider Florida like real East Coast. It's like, pff, that's Florida. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? yeah. So, but, you know, obviously we identified with the East Coast, but there's like, I, I loved all of skateboarding, obviously, but the girl, the girl chocolates guys were like, like, I feel like all of skateboarding saw it that way, but they were like royalty. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I to see true. those dudes in person oh, and like man. Mariano, like, and I remember seeing Costin. Costin didn't come on that that one for some reason. I just remember no, the first there. time. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So we are thinking. I didn't know that you were there actually. Yeah. I don't remember. I, I'll have. There were sections though. You know what? I might have flew out when I was in New York because I know that there was definitely like because I didn't I didn't make it the whole trip where we were driving back because okay. I I definitely must have flew I must have flew home. So maybe I wasn't in that one, but I do remember doing a demo at 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 Tampa hmm. for sure. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the tapes and. And find out Let's if you were there. Pull the yeah. Ooh, Sick. There you heal from the pyramid? Dude, I don't remember what I did at that time. <laughs> Nolly heel. Nolly time. heel on the hip. That was probably whatever I, remember, I was doing at that time. Switch trays and, you know. Yeah. Switch That's when, this is when the vert ramp was like in the original setup. Because the park was only open probably a year and a half at that point, I think, when you guys came. And the... Was, the, the setup was a little different. Was it in the back corner? No, this is like, that's that's how it was for the majority of the 90s. But in the beginning, it was right when you walked out of the pro shop, the vert ramp was right there. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And there was like this little overhang where there was a ledge and this like shitty bank ramp. And I have, I just remember specifically from that demo, Mariano did, he's goofy. So he did half, hold on, I'm trying to think. 
I have a bad memory. It, he, it was, he, I remember him doing Nolly 180 switch crooks across this box. This is like 93 or 94. Okay. Yeah. And then yanking it out front side half cab on, on, uh, and that was insane oh, back going then. In. Definitely. And just, I remember getting that, you know, a little poacher, just getting that. I could like, see a guy yes. doing that. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. a guy trick back mm-hmm. then for sure. This was yeah, Swishy was Pants so era too. Swishy. He was yeah. probably wearing like Converse. And it was like hot. I'm sure it was really hot. Shit. I'm sure at that time. Oh yeah. For sure. Yeah. So you have all these tapes still and you, do you ever, when you think of something like that, is that what sparks you to go look at them or do you just constantly look through them randomly? It kind of depends. Like I recently, just like a week ago, I was, I did, just did a thing on my story. I was like, I'll just open up my tape case. Like I have all these tape cases around me right now um, for like, you know, like one, one of these drawers probably has like two years worth of tapes, you know? So I just pull a random one and just, and just film myself going through it on my story. But yeah, I'll like, I've done some stuff on like our, our YouTube channel, yeah. you know, like um, where I just, I'm like, I'll just do like raw tapes from static three, our Israel trip. You know, we filmed in Israel for that, for that trip video. So I'll just like capture a bunch of stuff and just, this is what's on this tape and make an edit out of it. I mean, that's, that's what, I mean, I'm I'm sure you're familiar with what Beagle's doing and his little YouTube. I mean, that, that kind of stuff's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. People want to see that stuff. They do more than ever right now. It sucks because I'm not like. It's a lot of time. Oh yeah. It's a, it's, it's a shitload of time, but it's, you know, that's, what's fun about it is it is, is it's a fun thing to do for our, for theories of Atlantis on our thing Mm -hmm. on our YouTube channel, because it's like, I get to, have this nostalgic moment but also it it helps bring some people to you know who might want to watch it actually to our to our stuff totally um but the the thing that sucks is i was never a filmer who was like i hated like i always felt like skaters didn't want the camera like in their face and filming anything but skating so i was like had this bad habit of like the second somebody bails turn it off turn it off so and then i watched like um oh my god jacob uh rosenberg has like it's just insane dude he's got like everything you watched in, in like questionable there's he's got all the moments in like rick howard like sitting on the curb ta- you know like it's in man. between man. all those classic man. moments it's like that shit's amazing i just very, wish i'd there was a couple filmers during that time that did that schlossbach did that as well and really he he would just keep the camera going and just film us yeah. which was rad because now in hindsight i'm like dude i I want to see that. I want to see yeah. how I was talking. Just everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? totally. Did you trip on him filming it at all? Did no, anyone I was, trip? I was not tripping at all. I was just skating. I was so geeked yeah. on just skating. And, and if I did get a clip, I would be like, let me see it. Like, you yeah. know, like, like, did people trip out on that, you think? What? Any other skaters? Like, stop filming me, dude. I feel like we just talked to somebody recently about that. I don't remember if it was a filmer or a skater, but somebody was talking about having the camera always on them it was beagle yeah i've definitely had skaters who didn't want me to to film anything but the skating yeah and we're like you know made that known um but it's i mean the thing of the downside which i'm sure roger can identify is is if you are that kind of filmer who films all that that in between stuff capturing your footage is a nightmare you know what i mean yeah (laughs) and i'm bad about i just fast forward through a tape till i see my hand and then and then i'm editing like the last video for static four, I'm editing it and I'm all I have is skate footage in my, in my bends. I'm like, God damn it, dude. And then I, you know, remember, Oh, there was that homeless guy. What yeah. day was that? Oh, oh. And then yeah. you go back through everything and find that moment. It's just like, you're like, that know, moment like, wasn't Chris, even that good. Like <laughs> after, <laughs> after, after you get it, hours, you're like, Oh, I know of uh, Chris Mulhern, Roger, I don't know if you do this too, but um, he told me he just captures the entire, all his tapes. He just puts it in hits, hits capture. And so that he's logged, his entire library is wow. on a hard drive, I which is smart. That. What? I What's wish that? I did that. Yeah. I wish, you did yeah. That. I wish I had the hard drive space for that, but yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. Well, dude, you, so you still use the VX. Is that only thing yeah. you use? Um, I VX and I use a, a Bolex. I shoot a lot of 16 millimeter. Mm. Um, but I, I, I started doing the HD stuff. I have like an HVX and a, a 5d and I was doing that stuff for jobs um, which I was doing like before TOA start, like actually started going, you know, I was working a lot of just like whoever would hire me. I, I was, you know, desperate. I was working at a restaurant and just working all kinds of random jobs. Um, and it all had to be HD at that point. I think I actually got hired by Red Bull to shoot Tampa Am 
um, and it was, uh, I, they're, they're like, you have H, you know, it has to be HD. I'm like, yeah, of course. Okay. What, what else? You know? And they're like, all right. And you have to, it was like three days before literally, I'm not kidding. They hired me like three days before you get to fly, you know, they fly down to Tampa, hung up with her and just went on eBay looking for HVX is like, what the, what the, oh, f- no. <laughs> most of the stuff that I'm doing, I think uh, it would be fine if there was like, if we do a, a full hops video, you know, video piece all on HD, Sure. but I'm, you know, it's just like, I'm just going to keep using the VX. You, you, know? like, you and, love and, it. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm torn. Yeah. yeah. It, sometimes it looks great. And sometimes I'm like, Oh God, I wish this was an HD. Yeah. yeah. It you depends know? who's like with him, totally. with Josh using it. Like, you know how to use the camera. So there's a lot of newer sure. kids using it now that they don't know how to use it. And it looks all blown out. Facts. And it's just not as fun well, to watch. The thing is though, is, is to, to make, for the VX, especially night, night skating it's it's a little more in my opinion it's a little more work you know like it's it's not very light sensitive you have to have the right light and everybody's gotten lazy including myself with just bringing these like the little led lights out with you which realistically they look like shit in my opinion you know like people they're like the japanese filmers i think started using two led lights you know they do one on camera one handheld and they do it well oh wow everybody started copying that i've had to do it recently because my long story but i've been having light problems in my usual light and i can't i need one of the, one of my hands to know you know like because i'm gonna i know i'm gonna eat shit at least one try out of you know and i want to so to have your hands off full doing sure. that and then you always see the light come into the shot so put it on your head put it on I'm, your head <laughs> i always tripped out how good really? the the vx footage was in in japan i didn't yeah. realize they had the extra hand that they were using. Now, what is that? Why do they do, do is LED light not powerful enough that they need two? Or is it just the yeah. way that they're angling It's not as it? full. There's something about it where it's not as full. I mean, mm. I'm like, it's funny because I've, you know, my whole 30 years of filming and doing, you know, for for work and, you know, I'm the least technically knowledgeable, you know, mm. people like kids DM me like, hey, do you, you know, like asking me to, like model numbers of things. If you're going to use this verse and I'm like, dude, I don't even know what you're talking yeah. about. Like, yeah. basically, <laughs> it, I'll learn something by trial and error. Sure. Um, and then, uh, but the something about like, I use this, uh, it's called a best core. It's like this old light with barn doors and it's just hmm. the crisp. There's something so crisp about the light and it fills, it's like, it's got a nice um, diffuser and it fills an, a wide space but with a, a bright, crisp light and the LEDs, there's bright LEDs, but for some reason they just don't fill the space properly. And so that's why having a second light helps, you know, it, you can just tell for some reason when you just have one LED, I can tell. And I think most people, they don't know why it doesn't look as good. Hmm. Um, but night footage is a, does not look in my opinion, right. Unless you have like a, a, Interesting. a good light, you know, right. like, huh. Uh, and I think filming standards have really gone down a lot. It being the fact that like everybody's a filmer, everybody's a video maker and an yeah, editor on their phone. Sure. And so people allow, I've, I've found myself like there's, I never would have done a lot of the stuff. I would never would have just used one led light like five years ago. And like when I was working on static four, I had to film like Aaron Harrington might, that had a battery problem. That's the problem is all this technology is, is ancient and terrible and degrading and there's nobody who fixes any of it anymore. And it's like, but I filmed a few tricks of Aaron Harrington right near the end with this, with that led light. And I, it bums me out every time I see the clips, you know what I mean? Cause it just, it's noticeable. It's like a sore thumb. And now I'm doing it all the time just cause it's like New York city, you have this heavy shit and I'm having all these problems with my old Mm. battery pack. And I got the Bolex in my bag too. And it's just like, fuck. Why not chain? You can't, but I, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm just saying, but the standard has gone down. In my opinion, sure. filming quality has gone down to where it's just like, it doesn't matter as much anymore. I'm like, well, I'll, I'll let myself go. You'll, you know, I'll let like, myself go that. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. good. Basically. But what, why not fix that light? Or can you buy those lights anymore? Are those, uh, are those lights not available? Dude. Hard to find. Everything is this. T- it's like, it's like basically trying to say, um, like somebody who insists on only listening to um, eight track, you know, it's like, dude, like, you know, like, why don't you, it's like, well, there's no such thing as it. No, nobody's made eight track players for 45 years. So <laughs> yeah. um, right. like my, my best core light, 
long story short, the, the it, you have to wear these battery packs that are a nightmare. <laughs> um, and I've had like a thousand different versions of them. And for some reason, you'll charge it overnight, like all night long. Go out, I start filming. It's always like something like Jamal, like the, like getting a clip with Jamal to me is extra special. And he's doing something really hard. And I'm like, oh, I'm so hyped. Turn it on. And within three tries, I, I start noticing the light dimming already. Oh. Like there's just something about this technology. The charger just like uh. one out of every three charges, it doesn't properly charge. And then I, my chargers, I had two chargers. They stopped working. I ordered them from B&H and they don't, nobody makes them anymore. And it's like, I ordered it and it said, delivering in six to eight weeks. That was literally six months ago. I never got them. Never got them. So, no. So it's just like, same thing, like the cameras, you know, it's like, there was a guy, the guy, Carrie, everybody knows this guy, Carrie. And uh, I think he's in Connecticut um, who fixed everybody's cameras. And he's kind of, he's still doing it, but he's overwhelmed and kind of mm -hmm. over it. And then there was the guy, George or uh, down in, in Texas who was fixing cameras. And, um, and it's just like, I, it's going to the bubble's going to burst. You know what I mean? Right, <laughs> it's like getting right, to that point. Right. Sure. Man. And I just can't imagine carrying that. Like I filmed a. I went on that Amazon trip for Skateboarder Mag. Oh, back filmed. in there with a, um, Kenny Anderson and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Kenny was working on the cho uh, chocolate video, I think. Okay. Um, and so Mesa sent his his uh, HD. Um, death lens for me to use because I have the HVX and I used it twice and both times the first time I was filming Sabak and I it's just like the it's so you know the weight is so different and I'm so hyper like oh my god if I fall and on this lens it's Aaron's you know it's like Bezos a two thousand dollar lens, lens. Like yeah. three thousand three thousand they're twenty twenty six hundred new Jesus. back then now they're they're probably more valuable wow um but I ate I ate shit and like really really got hurt filming Jack but I didn't hurt the lens Save and me. then I didn't use it the whole rest of the trip and then I landed in Miami and I filmed one trick of Ben Gore on it and he did a trick over a handrail and started bombing a hill and I hit a crack and oh. scorpion and broke my collarbone with that, that mm -hmm. lens. And I, I hit the edge of the lens. I didn't hit the glass, but I didn't, and I wasn't even filming Kenny and I scratched oh. the outside of Maze's lens. Did you, did you tell him or did you just send it back and be like, thanks buddy. <laughs> That would be amazing. Right? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Back? It must have been in shipping. I don't know. He's not going to watch this episode anyway. So <laughs> but it was like, you could see the scratch in the outside. So I'm pretty sure I had to, I had to tell him. So it was on the glass or no, it was on the, no, it was on, on the, the metal frame. on the edge, gotcha. on the frame. Okay. So God. it didn't affect oh, anything. Yeah. It was, it was cosmetic. No, yeah, it was cosmetic. Bad. Right. But so, I did break my collarbone. <laughs> Dude, so I was just like, yeah. I was like, this is, a, I'm just not going to deal with those falls that filmers take to protect the camera, man. Oh they goodness. are brutal. Oh, man. Yeah. That's, oh yeah. I, I, that's amazing though. You did that. <laughs> you just switch to a little GoPro, dude. And you'll be fine. Dude. Some of the stuff people film with, there's that guy, Calvin Miller in Texas. Do you ever watch his Instagram or his uh, yeah, Instagram channel? No. He's like, I think he's like a, like a DP or something. He's like works out of skateboarding. Like he mm. probably knows actually what he's doing, but he uses that um, fucking one of these, cra you know, every company has these weird cameras. He has that 360 camera yeah. oh, where sure. he can film and he films on, it ha it's like on a wand or some sort and everything. If you watch his Instagram, it's so entertaining. He films with it incredibly well and mm. like films all the, the local, I think it's San Antonio guys. Huh. Um, and it just, you know, like I'll, I'll see that. And I'm like, I, mean, I think that camera is expensive, but it's seriously, it's like this big and he's just fucking around for fun and it looks amazing. And I'm just like crazy carrying this fucking Bolex around New York city and VX and batteries and the belt pack and like you need a GoPro nine, dude. Yeah, the GoPro so, 9. The GoPro has a little uh, 360 thing, too. I mean, I just really? look at stuff like Chris Ray, what he's doing. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty. He just carries a, a stick and a little box that film <laughs> that's what i think that like. calvin guy's doing yeah same do you see any hd cameras that you like people like using out there it's really i don't even know what you know i think i can tell in hvx when i see it in in, in a lot of scenarios but it, it's it all comes down to the filmer right really yeah. you know i've seen there's a, a video that came out last year um called uh finta out of croatia um of all places Whoa. and it's um 
you know, the dude's cameras, it doesn't matter. Like you can tell he's using just like shitty, you know, high or not high, but shitty mini DV camera. Like some of it, maybe he's using that geo. I don't know what he's using, but it's, it's old and, and not great. And there's scratches on the lens, but he does. It's, it's the, it was my favorite video of the year just because mm. it was just so unique and so entertaining. He has all these, you know, it's very spirit quest like, you know, sure. with like weird little vignettes and skits and um, it's just fun. And it, it's like, at first, when I first popped it in, cause I had already, I was like, um, I went to the, they have this uh, independent film festival in Croatia that they've been doing forever. Um, and uh, actually probably t- I think it's the this would have been the 10th year um and this guy nicola uh runs it they're the, they're the that whole crew is the best was this tiny skate scene in uh in croatia and they it's a an independent film festival and they were like invited me year after year and i was always like in the middle of something I was, and last two years ago we finally my girlfriend and i were finally went and it was so fucking awesome like Ooh. just the, the town is amazing it's like it's basically they call it the poor man's italy basically because it's on the it's it's on the same you know the opposing coast and a very similar climate and okay. and um but but it's not like a tourist trap sure you know? and um anyways the finta this finta video is what premiered at the last last year's um oh god i can't believe i can't think of the name of the film festival but um, cause I want to give them credit, but, uh, uh but anyways, the video come is to just you tonight when you're sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, usually when I'm like in the shower, you're doing something, sure. you, you know, brushing your teeth, you're cooking yeah. dinner. You're like, God damn it. That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he, uh, I bought the videos like sight unseen basically. Cause Nicola, who does the film festival, he's like, dude, you gotta see this video. It's so unique. And then I hit him. I was like, Hey, we'll buy, I think like 25 copies, like definitely want to carry it on the site. Mm. And then when I popped it, I do, I've done that a few times where I buy something blind, you know, and then I pop it in and I'm like, uh, uh, <laughs> all right, you know, at least we're supporting, you know, so right. I popped his video in, and the quality at first, you know, you could tell he was using, you know, some different kind of crappy cameras, but then you'll see if you guys, if whoever goes and watches it after this, you'll see why. Cause he does all kinds of crazy shit where he does like, he does an angle from inside a shoe. I don't know how he, how he does it from the hole of a shoe, you know, like, like where your big toes going through the hole of yeah. your shoe. Oh, what? He somehow made, like gives you the, uh, the, he, sh- the, he created like a fake little miniature camera. So he, you, you were like, what is this view I'm seeing? And you can see the edge of like the, and then it pulls back and then he cuts to him pulling this little tiny camera out of a shoe, just like weird <laughs> wow. stuff. Like like what? that super inventive okay. but but my point was when i put it in the quality i was like oh no this might be bad and then it's like dude it doesn't this is awesome you Amazing. know like and that's how i feel about hd like people there's people who like are make hd look like a vx in the sense you know where they're just sure. really good at it and keep it moving because the the hd thing it slows down motion the 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 aspect ratio, in my opinion, you know, it, it's a wider screen. Yes. It seems to slow down motion and, and the action doesn't feel as like in your face or exciting, but there are filmers who, uh, Jason Hernandez was really there good with go. the HVX with and the fisheye. It, that's just what I was saying before. It's like, it's just, I, I'm, I'm on the fence, right? It's like yeah. a, a VX. It depends who's behind the camera. Yeah. yeah. Really. Yeah. It's just totally, but, I agree though, because it's such a wide field of you're using 16 by nine, and sometimes like the skater's this big, but they're trying to get this flower over here too. And like, you're just like, well, take your pick, man. It's the flowers <laughs> at the skate. Because in your face is what I love. Of course. I love in your face skateboarding. Yeah. That's what I love with the VX. They get in there, it's in your face. And it's tough because I think my generation, obviously, is everything you fell in love with, skate video wise, was VX, sure. basically. Yeah. yeah right. You know, so. Again, sometimes I'm, I see stuff and I'm like, God, I wish that was in HD. Yeah. You know, like I'm glad the Baker video is in HD. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Just right, because right. I want to see these guys now in 2020 the way that. It is, you know, it's, it's time. Like yeah, same it vibe, time. Just, it's same, the same vibe, vibe, but just yeah. clearer. Yes, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I can see who it is. Well, there's some film that the thing too, like that to me, the the HVX is so cumbersome. Mm. You know, there's plenty of other v- or HD cameras, but that's just the one that I you know have aside from the VX, and it was kind of the most popular for a while. But then I've seen like there's a line that Grant Yancira filmed of um, oh my god for some weekend thing. Tom Kringlov. It was oh, actually it hasn't come out yet. I was oh, I was at a come- spot. No, I was at a spot in Connecticut, and Trevor Thompson was like uh, 
Grant filmed and he showed me like what this dude did and how Grant filmed it. And it's a spot where there's these, these scary ramps that go down, down, down and down. And Grant stayed in, he's like, he stayed in front of him this whole, that whole line. And like, I was scared just rolling down it literally like rolling down the last part without, cause you can't see people coming in the grounds all fucked up. And, uh, but you know, somebody like that, who's, who's can still use a, a HD camera, like a VX, you know, and wow. is willing to be that, mm -hmm that risky with it or, or you know essentially like i'm sure that line's gonna look incredible when it comes out if it did, grant's a great so. grant's a great filmer yeah. man yeah. yeah yeah we review videos all the time here on the nine club experience and sometimes it's a vx right sometimes it looks great sometimes it looks like shit right yeah people don't know the settings maybe newer kids i don't know is there settings that you could tell people than the vx how to like set a vx up for proper filming or does it depend on the white balance and the, the daytime or what time of day? Like, I don't know. I'm not a camera guy. Right, right. A secret menu? Uh, huh? A secret menu? Is there a secret? Yeah. The, um, the like, A, B, B, A, A, left, right, up, up down, up, down. <laughs> up, down, left, right, left, right. Yeah. yeah Start. Yeah. Nintendo, Nintendo jokes. It's a good um, and the, right for um, the demographic. So is there, there isn't some type of secret, like, how do we set up a VX uh, settings or what do you... Do kids DM you and ask you these questions? It seems like it might be different for each filmer, right? I guess I don't. Definitely. I don't know these things. Yeah. It's funny because there's a there's a, a Florida setting. Oh. Um, which Floridian filmers have been? I've heard. You know, you, you don't know this stuff until you move out. You know, yeah. I live in New York City, and I hear I hear it. Like, there's a thing in New York City. There's so many Floridians up here. There's like a little bit of like fucking floridians like, just, <laughs> they're, they're, they're out here too just in there they're talking, too, talking under their breath like <laughs> man and let me tell you something these kids are in, in they're killing it man these kids coming out of florida scenes gnarly over there right wow now. man really? talk about talent coming out of there jeez it's crazy because it comes in waves out of different areas because then you have that that That's central true. east coast you know with like um jesus jamie and Zion and yeah, all that, you know what I mean? Out of Jupiter, Florida. And all yeah. That. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. So no no but settings that you could say. You just kind of got to work it out yourself. Go bright, on. sunny day. There's no shade. Like, what are you, what are you settings at? What is your shutter speed at? Secret, man. Okay. <laughs> you got to teach the kids, dude. <laughs> well, let's see. You can keep your secrets, though, too. Keep them secrets. Yeah, you can keep the secrets. You know? Well, Let's give them some it's, fucked it's, up setting right now. <laughs> Set them up for disaster. Yeah. Well, what I was saying about the Florida thing, it, like, I was on, I was filming. Do you guys know uh, Joe Krawlick? I'm sure you guys Of know. course. I worked with him yesterday. Yeah. Was. Really? Yeah. Sick. Um, Joe, uh, I was, we all filmed for Full on One, basically, mm -hmm. you know, in the 90s and mm -hmm. early 2000s. And I, I remember once he, uh, I was at Tampa, Tampa Pro, I think. And I was at the bottom of the of the pyramid, and he's like, "Hey, Josh, let me see your camera real quick." I was like, "What?" He's like, "Let me look." Through, and he looked through my viewfinder, and he's like, hmm. "And he's like, look at mine." And I looked at it, and he looked at me. He said, "Golden," and then went back to filming. Wow. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and it was like it, it's, it's like a setting to basically that gives kind of like a copper, you know, a copperish, you know, orange tone to your footage, and and that in I looked great, and I started copying that that look and um was he setting the white I'll, balance off the concrete no i think he was setting white balance on the blue sky that's oh. that was my understanding um but a lot of floridian filmers started doing i don't know i'm not saying it's because of me i have no idea but there's several floridian filmers and they would take it like a step further and make it really orange you know really like coppery orange and that became kind of this like Florida thing where you, you know, mm. people would, that's what I was referring to. Sure. Florida, the Florida white balance. Yeah. I know what you're, you're talking about, but there's a, I like that, but it's, you know, in moderation, given but a little can't bit. Can't you like, do that in post? No, you can't do it the same in post. No, it it's not the you same, have, but like uh, Jason Hernandez used to put like 4% yellow tint on all his footage for Transworld. I remember that. Mm. Oh, hmm. yellow tint. Hmm. Wonder why. The thing, the thing, I think I mentioned this too in my last show. The thing that was, I'm not saying like the thing that was tough for me because I don't, you know, <laughs> but in the nineties, you know, there was, there was no internet or social media. And I was like, um, Joe Perrin eventually became, started filming, uh, and Joe works for Santa Cruz now and does all, all, um, the NHS stuff. Mm -hmm. He's awesome. But, um, 
early on, I was the only filmer in like a filmer in, in Florida that, you know, there was a couple other like young guys I know who started like picking up cameras and stuff, but there was nobody to share secrets with or learn the trade from. And so, and California was like as far away as Japan is right now, you know sure, what I mean? Sure. In that era. And I wasn't, didn't have any ins. So I kind of, I had to learn all this stuff by myself, which I liked because I'm anything you fuck up, nobody else is, you know, like yeah. nobody sees your fuck ups. Um, and then it wasn't until like the two thousands where the four one one guys started coming, you know, where I started kind of socializing with them right. and started learning other little things. But in the early days it was, it was, it was a real crap shoot. You'll see like static one. I have like, I finally got the VX, but I had the old, like the lenses you used to buy fish eyes for like $80 at like camera stores, you know, like literally like the, the local photo you know, place down the street would have like these shitty screw on fish eyes. Yeah. It's just like a and little, it's like a, not like the, the death lens. Right. Yeah. Right. It looks like a people like, yeah. And, and you would, um, I have some, there's so like several like really rad clips in static one that I film with that thing. And it just looks so it's such a bummer. Cause it's just <laughs> this eyesore of like Sean Molendor, like this rad line of, of him. And, I, and, and now in hindsight, you know, I've, I think the first clip I ever saw was um, Jeremy Ray's front three down the Venice triple set that I knew was the Viet, that that death lens. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. And filmed. And that's that's the best trick you could ever, you know, that's the best clip for a, 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 oh a fisheye, you know? Mm, for real. Mm -hmm. And I saw that. I was like, I don't care how much it costs. I, I, don't care. I have to have that thing. Well, the one you probably you had, had vignetting. That, I was going to say, you probably had the one. It was like super crazy vignetting. Yeah. And yeah. Everything. But when you step up to the VX, you don't want that. Yeah. No. Maybe just a no. little. Did the, I can't remember. The, the Death Lens didn't have the vignetting, right? Like a tiny, maybe a little tiny, tiny bit. It was like a bit. tiny bit. Mm. Some people are taking filming HD and then they're cropping a VX vignette and putting it over right. and making a four by three to give it, it's like, Oh, you think it's VX, but it looks, but yeah, it's HD. But you're, 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 but you're degrading the video. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's weird. Only it's cool it that the, the guy who first, I think he's, weird. he's, um, yeah. he's based out of the UK. The first guy I know who did that. It's a rad con. You know what I mean? The fact that he did it is, is rad. You know what I mean? But, um, but after yeah, a while, it just depends. Man. This is 2021, buddy. I know. Yes, it Tell is. Me about but it. some naturally, three D. Some HD still naturally have the vignetting, right? I've seen no. like a few. Yeah, yeah. I've seen like really? Spanish Mike and Kevin Perez. Yeah, they, I think so. Yeah, some lenses will do that. To some your lenses, and it looks mm -hmm. amazing. Their footage looks incredible. I like the little vignetting, but I haven't noticed a fake one. Um, you wouldn't know. Yeah, I mean, you could if you're paying attention, you might be like, that looks a little too clean. Right. But he's he's also treating the footage a little bit to give it. I think. To give it, he was another one. I saw his video at the um, the uh, Croatian uh, film festival. We can't remember the name of it. Dude. Vladimir. Oh, Vladimir. Yeah. Vladimir. Kelly's boy, Vladimir. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He hacked into Kelly's uh, MySpace. Lot, lot of Facebook. <laughs> yeah. 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 Circle with Vladimir. That, that was Wait a minute. Is it called? It's, it's called, called the Vladimir Vla Film Festival. The yeah, Vladimir yeah. Film Festival. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Love that. Wow. Named it after himself, huh? <laughs> Guys I don't know where the name comes from. I, I'm sure I asked him, but there's nobody there named Vladimir. No, no. Could be. And the name the of the town guy. is is uh oh my god, this brain, this memory of mine is. I'm the same way, man. Yeah, After you've traveled this world so many times, you've traveled the world a lot, man. <laughs> yeah. But no, you you forget, right? That's no doubt you about it. Where you are, what the spot? It, it's crazy. Yeah, but it Vladimir, is, Vladimir, yeah. If I'm ever in Croatia, I'll go check out this Vladimir Film Festival. Sounds like it's epic. seriously though, like it, it's it's awesome. It's like it it was one of those, you know, cause dude, like yeah, I'm gonna just like up and fly to fucking Croatia, <laughs> yeah. right? You know what I mean? It just seemed like, dude, that's so awesome. This dude keeps inviting me, and they were like offering to pay for my ticket to come and stuff. Wow! And I'm like, dude, I couldn't. And, this is and then just a skateboarding film festival. Mm hmm. It's strictly independent stuff. So, Amazing. but dude, there's it's good only... spots out there. I've seen a lot of people going out there in the last couple of years, right? I'm not sure. I, the The guy who organizes it, um, Nicola, he did a full length video all oh. based out of there too. Really? And there's a lot of like, uh, there's spots, but it's like it's more the like like the the city has like these kind of like the these rad. It's like a little Italian village, is what it feels like. You know yeah. I mean? But there's like the main city is like 20 minutes away called Pula. 
and they, they have their own like um parthenon like in rome mm-hmm. there's like a, another version of that thing like a thousand you know, whatever i have no idea 1500 year old sure. but um not a lot of spots that i saw but they make do with it and do rad stuff but it's it's like anybody like all the dudes who are like have cool like uh zines or like mm-hmm. you know rad print all the print mags you know that are like they go all, all go out there like the free mag guys and the you know whatever like the uh um push periodical guy you know richard hart like everybody goes out there who's like a fan of that kind of stuff and it's just a rad little uh, you know conglomeration of of that kind that's of sentiment. dope yeah, it's, yeah, that's, that's cool. cool that's cool dude it's he did a they set up a uh stat it was like the 20 year anniversary of static the first static video last year so they did a like a art show that was like the main event is they did an art show for static and so i brought a bunch of like i shipped did i no i brought it and then i left it and they shipped it back but like all the art these artifacts like cameras that i you know used and like all kinds i saved all kinds of weird like ephemera from over the years now is there a big turnout for something like this in croatia in in... it's surprising i mean the local locally maybe no maybe there's like 75 people from the local like surrounding area sure there's such a a rad network of like underground you know like diehard mostly vx kind of like filmers and and editors and like um there's it's like the whole list of guys that I see, you know, like Zach Chamberlain in San Francisco and like, um, Amerik Nokis, the guy who rides for or writes for, uh, live skateboard media. It's a French website. Hmm. And, um, Amerik always goes and like, gee, I mean, it's just like these rads, these little pockets of scenes around the country, they all converge there. I, I, and I'm sure there's different people there every year, but it's just, um, it's just a really cool, you know a really rad thing that that still happens and it's crazy it's like keeping it going man the vladimir film festival in croatia it's like a best kept secret they have like a the whole place is just magical but they have like a fucking like um they're you know croatia i don't want to i don't want to misquote and give wrong information but i think it it had they had like a communist dictator at a certain point Mm. and he had his own private i again um my memory (laughs) i might just be making this up but he had his own i think he had his own private island right off of like the little town that this thing is um happens in and he had his own zoo with like like exotic animals and shit and his own theater and stuff and now it's been it's become public land and um so this like the at the the culmination of the whole the whole fel- film festival we go you take a barge out to this island and you watch the last i think we watched um oh my god i think it's did tobin yellen just do like a 16 minute super 8 film last year is that who it was oh raj tobin just well, did one recently it had like ben ramers and everyone in it but there was like yeah and they're like driving a car around and like sh- yeah. jesus christ yeah. anyways that was like the 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 like ye old the, something or other. Yeah, that was you ye old destruction or something like that. No, something like that. Yeah, hmm. something like that. But the, anyways, that premier they played that there at in the in like the, the, zoo. The, the well at the dictator's old theater outdoor his own personal old theater, and then we all like rode bikes to this zoo, and it's <laughs> it's dude you can like you get to the gate and it it looks like that giant it's like this giant wooden gate with these doors that slowly open and somebody uh. Somebody queued up the Jurassic Park. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> we like yeah. rode yeah. bikes Amazing. through it. And they have like zebras and shit. And it's, it's, it's such wild. a. It sounds bizarre. wild. Yeah, it's amazing. It's Damn, amazing. I want to go to the Vladimir Film Festival in Croatia. I don't know. Same. Where are you talking about the VX though, man? Am I, am uh, I no, I, I, I'm torn, man. It's 50. Maybe they can ch- totally change my mind, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, I'm, uh, you guys should change my mind. Tell me why see. VX is yeah, good. VX, <laughs> VX is better. Change my mind. <laughs> Was it Tito's Had island? Table. What's that? Was it Tito's private island? Who's <laughs> Tito? Oh, the the old uh, dictator. I'm not sure. It might be Tito's. I have no idea. I think that was um, the plane. The plane. <laughs> the uh, Brzezuni island. Yeah, Brzezuni. Yeah, that's it. I think. Roger's back there googling. That sounds right. Googling over here. I'm confusing right. it because ding, ding, there's ding, um. Ding, ding. Romania had that cre- Ceausescu. I'm confused. I'm thinking of Ceausescu too. He was mm. a gnarly like dictator, right down the you know right next door basically in that that area. But it's fascinating. Anyways, that was hot in that zone. Fascinating, bro. Yeah. 
Vladimir Film Festival in Croatia. They'll change my mind, man. I'll make it out there one day. What uh, what time of year do they there. usually have that? September. I mm-hmm. think it's every every year in September. Okay. I wanted to go to the uh, <laughs> the year that we went. I wanted to go to the uh, the Mothman Festival in uh, wow. in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. <laughs> that my girlfriend and I were planning on going to that, and then they invited me to that thing again, and I, I was like, dude, I gotta I gotta go one year. We gotta do this. The, the Mothman. Man. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Festival. I don't know what you that ever is. Seen, you never seen Mothman Prophecies? I, I have. I have. The, you I have no I idea. That movie. I can't see. It came out years ago. I'm like it's a scary just, movie guy, and that definitely oh, yeah? intrigued me to go see yeah. that. And I definitely saw it, and I don't remember it. That's how good it was. Uh, okay. <laughs> <a> good <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this Mothman But thing. yeah, give me a little uh, brief. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. Little, they have a zoo and a... It's just a rad, like one of these weird local legends, that, but it's like something happened yeah. in point and it's like a, you know, cryptid, you know, like it's yep. a, um, something happened in Point Pleasant, West Virginia in the seventies oh, or it mm. might've been sixties. And it was, a. Uh, there's all these sightings of this, this bizarre creature. Yep. Um, well, but there's this guy, John Keel, like went down and investigated, wrote, wrote a whole book on it. And that's what the movie was based on. But it's like, it's not just like, you know, there's like Bigfoot and all these kind of like, sure. where it's like an, a creature that's undiscovered, but the Mothman thing, it's just like, I don't know if I believe there's actually a real thing, but whatever happened, it has all these bizarre elements to it where yeah. like people had all these UFO sightings leading up to it. And then these weird like interactions with these people who they were like human, human like, um, and this cre- this weird character named Indrid Cold is what he called himself, and and it was like people were getting getting visited by um, Men in Black. That's kind of like I don't think that's the origin of the concept of Men in Black, you know. But they're they're also like like a character, like a, a strange figure. They're not like government agents, you know, mm-hmm. like we think of because of the stupid movie. But they're like these characters who come who aren't really like fully human that visit people and like threaten them not to report these sightings. But there's all this. Weird Weird stuff that happened. It's not just like, oh, a couple like country bumpkins saw this, you know, it's like there's like the police, you know, like the sheriff had all these experiences and this guy, John Keel, who went down there, had all these weird experiences. And then after all this stuff kind of bubbled, there was a big disaster where their bri- the bridge that went over the Ohio River collapsed and killed like 57 people or something. And then the Mothman kind of stopped being seen. And the, the, the theory is that it he's like this harbinger of like, you know, like he's warning people or something, you know, but it's just, a, it's a super fascinating story. I just love stuff like that. It's, yeah. You know, and, and they have a festival, <laughs> they have a festival oh, once a year where festival. people come oh, to man, town. You should go, Drone. I might have to. Wait, so <laughs> you gotta go, Drone? <laughs> I might have to. <laughs> Rod, pull, Seriously. Pull up. <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this fiction? Is this like a fake? Is this just a made up story? Or like this is actual? No, it's no, real. It's, it's a real. Mothman. No, is this, it's, re- it, it's real. It's a documentary. Encounters. The Mothman. Yes. I'm going to go. No, the Mothman Prophecies is a movie. It's oh. a fictitious story. It's, yes. it's fully embellished on. Gerard knows. True story? <laughs> Let's hear it from Gerard. I, look, and apparently I don't know because I told you I don't remember the movie. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I did see the movie, but I don't remember. But once he's like, explaining so it, you now saw, like, coming back. So you saw the embellished here. like movie movie of this Mothman. Yes. Right. But then there's an... Are there documentaries about it? I'd love to... It's it's. I mean, dude, it's just like like I said. There's things like I love all this shit, obviously, and um, but there's certain things like this one. It's not just like oh, there's this this weird animal people saw. It's right. like it has all these other. It uh, it originated from this um, this old army. I don't think it was army, but it doesn't matter. A military uh, mm, military base where they were doing all that. They were basically developing weapons for World War Two. Um, and they left all these silos, these like mm. cement silos with like toxic chemicals and shit. And that's where people, kids would go there in the sixties, they would, they would park, you know, and yeah. make out. And that's where the first sighting happened. And it like, it left like this, it like had like a physical effect on the people who like witnessed it, like, like burn their eyes or something. It's just well, it's all these weird the elements to it. For that, it's from the right. chemicals. That's probably what happened. <laughs> there you go. Mothman, yeah. Mothman. But it's just, and then recently... <laughs> Like two years ago, they, the, um, there was like, hun- I'm not exaggerating by saying hundreds, but there was a bunch of reported sightings of the Mothman in Chicago. Oh, he um, moved. Yeah. 
Yeah, he, he took that trip. So he, he, he pulled this, up to Chicago. <laughs> is Chicago. there is there photos of this dude like like images or something like that? Probably there, artist, artist renditions. Yeah, yeah. There's stuff like modern, like because when it was the first big flap in the '60s or '70s, nobody had you know video cameras didn't right, exist, right, or right. home movie cameras didn't exist. So um, in the Chicago stuff, people there are a few. I watch. When I get, when I finish, when I finish, when my experience is a little different, I, I usually work to like nine, nine thirty here at my desk. And then I go sit on the, make a acai bowl uh, and sit on the couch and queue up and everybody else brings up YouTube and they're like skateboard. And I'm like, monster, monster, moth man. And I, I watch, there's like a, a video, a guy called nuke nukes top five. And every once a week, I look forward to that more than anything. They're just like scary videos that people they're like ghosts, I love like that. cryptids, anything like that. And it's like the top five. But like you watch this before you go to bed. Yeah. Yes. I, don't no, I get weird and I get weirded out when I do shit like that. But he's like yeah. interested. Yeah. He's like fully I'm inter- interested in some of this shit too, but I, I can't watch the shit at night. <laughs> I mean, when it was, when I was younger, yeah, I'd be scared and shit, but like, yeah, yeah I'm watching this shit and I thought, <laughs> oh, <but> that, <laughs> it just makes me feel, it just makes me feel weird. Then you wait like five minutes, 10 minutes, you got the wind down and then yeah, you, the fucking, wind down. you know, yeah. throw some sports on or some shit. Well, there you go. Some ESPN. <laughs> go into the kitchen and look around. You're like, what's going on in here, dude? All right. And you turn the light Open on. Open my door. Yeah, like, yeah. Look, look by my door for the Mothman. Yeah. It's all thing, man. Listen, the Mothman. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. <laughs> first time I've heard of the Mothman. I'm interested. The movie's good. Fascinating. Richard Gere. That's not, who it was. Richard heard, Gere was in it. It's yeah. called the Mothman Prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not so yeah. much into the movie. I'm, I'm more into the documentaries. Right, I'm kind of both. Right. I love seeing well, the like a movie and the, nah, the doc- right. I love that. For yeah. me, it's just a document. I'm yeah. big, but documentary buff. So if there's a Mothman documentary on YouTube, I'll check it out. Did you see Blair Witch Project? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did that I actually Mothman? never saw that. That didn't have Mothman. No in Mothman. It. No Mothman. Mothman no. didn't pull up in the Blair Witch. He did not pull up. On the <laughs> <Blair>. <laughs> Damn. Uh, well, listen. I he, I want to talk to you more about some skate stuff. Can we do that? I would love yeah, to. Okay. It. I mean, we could go for hours on the Mothman. <laughs> yeah. I love the Mothman. I do too. Uh, Loch Ness Monster. Bigfoot. What's Mothman. another good one? What's Dude, don't dare me, man. Yeah. What's one good one? We won't I went go off on my. Uh, Except Josh for a good time. Right I know. Now. That's why I was I know, like, let's, talk, let's yeah. bring up one good yeah, one and not talk yeah. about it. Uh, give me something that, you, yeah, that you're like really, yeah, <laughs> that floats your boat. I don't know. I don't think we want to go there. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Okay. Listen. I'm not as much of like a, I, I like like, I just like mysterious shit. That's like, that we still haven't been able to figure out, you know? And yeah. and I, it's I, entertaining. Yeah. And, and the, the thing is, is there's stuff like the things that I've, I'm the most like that I've gone down the biggest rabbit hole on are like more related to like, you know, like a JF, the JFK conspiracy theory, that mm-hmm. stuff. I love like the history of it. Like right. when I was just, I was filming with Jordan, um, Trahan in new Orleans recently. And I was like, I had this, an address to this, how this office that's significant and like, in the JFK, in the Oswald story of Lee okay. Harvey Oswald, where he like, his story is just so, like, it doesn't have to be c- conspiracy at all. It's just fucking interesting. Right. It's like, if people love like mystery novels and like true crime and the story of this dude and everything that surrounded him leading up to the assassination is he was like, anyways, he, he was, there was this guy who had a, a private investigator, um, office Mm -hmm. in new orleans downtown new orleans but it was he was actually basically kind of like a cia he was connected to cia he was helping run like train cuban paramilitaries for a second bay of pigs invasion in cuba in the in the louisiana swamps basically but this dude was just like super like dirty and connected all the shit and lee harvey oswald was based out of that helping that guy and then he was caught like there were incidents of him like doing weird shit where he was like staging like fights and stuff, like starting fights with other, like with like pro Cuban uh, movements and just weird shit. It was just this strange, like the CIA was doing so much weird shit in the sixties, like crazy, you know, whatever, just crazy shit. Mm -hmm. And this office, I wanted to see this office, you know, because New Orleans has a, 
has maintained most of their old, you know, like buildings. And I got, I finally got a chance. I was filming Jordan the last trip I went and I couldn't, it was literally a fucking block away. Mm. And I was like, dude, I got it. And then, uh, Phil Senesuosa, um, Philly Phil from humidity started trying something. I was like, Oh, I gotta, gotta film this. And I filmed that for a while and then everybody's ready to go. So then this next trip, I finally went and got to the building and they, they bulldozed it and built some new like oh you know, damn boring building but you just want to see I, you just, I just want to see it yeah i just want to see it because it's like something i've read it's just yeah, part of like this the the lineage or not the lineage it's not the right word but it's just like a piece of like ephemera of this whole story it's like right. a tan i've never been to like dealey plaza um which is crazy huh. um but the thing is about this stuff uh i think we talked about it a little bit on the last show yeah, is yeah. it is it's like now the whole everything like consp all that world has been so co-opted into this like right. far right like horse shit that like i don't even it, you know what i mean i'm trying to like stay away from it yeah. and like it not be associated with it because i don't believe in any of that sh you know the q and on i mean everything's a might, conspiracy yeah yeah. And it's, but it's not, it's one thing if it's, everything's a cons conspiracy, but what it's done to this country right. the past Straight couple of years, right. you know what I mean? The no, division. Sucks, it, it makes people question everything and, and yeah. shit yeah. might yeah. be real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that, that's the fucked up thing about it. I think Yeah, it's been, it's been, like I said, it's been taken control of for some other purpose and used to manipulate people, yeah. you know? And, and so I wouldn't be, you know, I don't blame you if you cut this part out of this, out of this, of talking about, cause the QAnon thing, there's so many people who are like, like normal people who are like, they, it's like a religion, dude. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like oh, people yeah. are like swearing by it and it's fuck. it's just like, it's like, it's just crazy. You know, the whole, the, the way, what it's done and the. Have you watched the, the new documentary, the HBO? The HBO? Mm -hmm. They have no. a whole QAnon documentary. I, I watched oh, the first, uh, first two episodes, I think. Yeah, it's like a multi-episode. It. it looks super interesting, but. It's I interesting, think. but it's. It's crazy, well, man. Social media bring, has changed. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Yeah, my, I'm just saying my point of bringing it up is is I don't want to be associated with any of that. Right. Shit. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, as soon as you're a conspiracy theorist, whatever, right? Now you're, you're now you're associated with that, which right. it wasn't like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. It's like I'm not like to be – it's just somehow that right – the the far right someone somehow co-opted and got and got control of that because it's is it's a tool of manipulation and it and it worked and bringing this look at the shit that happened at the capitol you know yeah, and so yeah, yeah. when yeah. it comes to that stuff i love talking about that stuff because it's just interest you know like like i said it's a historical you know it's a historical fact that sure. this happened and then dissecting it and it's a, just a mystery but then when it goes into that that direction it, I'm just scared. I don't it want to be associated with that. So it's it like, becomes yeah. something else. Anyways. Let's yeah. Talk about skateboarding. A, no, I love, I'm a big fan of conspiracy no, I theories. That. I love, I, that, I love going down a rabbit hole. I love, you know, I, I don't necessarily like watch a YouTube video and then make my mind up of what right, it is, but right. I think I look at it as more of entertainment, right? It's just, exactly. it's just this form of entertainment. It's really fun. I'll watch a moon doc. Did we land on the moon? And did, it's just entertainment, you know, right. I'm not going to make my mind up by some, you know, Joe Schmo in Alaska that made a YouTube video and he's, right. you know. And then disown your whole family because they don't agree with yeah, you. Sure. You know I mean? <laughs> right, right, right. Which like is I'll happening, even, you know? Like I'll even yeah, watch. Is, that is happening. Real, it's real crazy. talk. I mean, my aunt is yeah. like, I mean, I never knew my aunt was going to be, you know, a big supporter of, you know, the last president, but I was like really shocked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the same time, you know. To each his own, you know, but it definitely had, yeah. a, a, it had me like questioning her and looking at her a little bit different, but sure. that was just right. me at the time. Because like I said, I never knew her to be right. that way. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But the, th but the it, thing is, is there's, there's elements of this stuff that's interesting and there, it's valid to say, Hey, there's something, there could be something here. It's worth investigating, yeah. right. but it's gotten to a point where it's literally, it's a religion now. You know, and so it's like you can't shake somebody from a religion, no matter how many facts you throw at them. And now facts aren't even like help. There's no such thing as truth anymore. No. So yeah. nobody, we have two truths in America now and it's, it's scary. It's really scary. Yeah, you know, the bizarre. division and, yeah. but this is not what people tuned in to listen to. Oh, trust me. You go check the comments below. <laughs> There'll definitely be some comments. There yeah. would definitely Dude, at, be comments. At, at, at one hour, 30 minutes, they start talking about conspiracy. Oh uh, man. It happens. But whatever, dude, we're just, we're well, just that, having a that, chat, man. Yeah. That board graphic on your wall behind you. The other way. That's, goes. um, that's a, a, a friend of mine, the uh, the the one with uh, Winnie the Pooh. The oh, you're right. The you're Winnie right, yeah. the Pooh. 
that we posted that on our Instagram uh, maybe a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And um, most people were supportive, but it's basically, you know, it's making fun of Trump. Yeah, I can and, see that. Um, oh, see yeah. The hair, I saw the oh, hair yeah. now. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. tell though at first. Listen, so, I mean, you know, it, it's it and and the the comments obviously, you know, and and it's just tough cuz I I want to engage in a conversation because I could have I feel though. like no, no, no you leave it at that. You let somebody yeah. else talk that out. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> we we do stuff on the show, we talk about stuff. If if it goes in a different direction for, you know, five minutes or 10 minutes, we're going to hear it in the comment, but I don't even care. I don't look at the comments. Yeah. I don't read the yeah, comments. I don't engage in it. It's like, cool, man, you took the time out of your day to just comment on some stupid shit that we're just, we're just riffing. We're having a good time. We're talking yeah. about stuff, yeah. you know, it's like, mm -hmm. just change the channel, dude. You know what I mean? They do that I more know. than, they do that way more now than ever, obviously. Yeah. It's crazy yeah. because you're never right, Josh. Right. That's you're crazy. never right. Yeah. You say it's blue. I say it's yellow, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about kickflips. <laughs> <laughs> More importantly, let's talk about hard flip late, late oh, kickflip. Sw switch, oh, hard yeah. flip. switch hard flip. Switch we hard flip. We, we did a top 10 with Kelly on the top last nine. top nine uh, yep. experience, 411 openers, openers oh, nice. on the okay. experience show. I believe that was number six. I chose switch hard flip, wow. late flip. Over uh, the pyramid at Tampa. And then we just, yes. right before the show, Raj just showed that you had filmed that. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I was like, wow, dude. What the hell was Ronnie doing? How many tries did that take <laughs> him? I mean, he, it looked like he just totally did it nonchalantly, like totally Krieger style, right? Like, hey, uh, hey, film this. Like, It looks like the way he did it, just all just, chill. Just, yeah. yeah. Were you there for the, it was a contest, That right? was probably was one a, of those things you were just standing at the pyramid filming everyone, sure. right? And then he just went by. Yeah. And did it. You know, when you're filming those things, it's like... It's like trench warfare in World War One, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. especially back then, you know, that was a pro contest, which they were a little more civil. You know, the AM contests were like, I mean, like dangerous as fuck. Yeah. But that, yeah. um, I would usually yeah. like, I'm like filming at one spot, but I'm I'm keeping my eye open, trying to find the thing. You know, that one thing. It's like, oh, I gotta go commit to that. You know, right. and Ron, Ronnie, I could swear, yeah, Ronnie in day one. It's again, it's one of those things. They were in town for like, not just for the contest. Mm. They were there for like a week or something. And they were, they, <laughs> it kept ending up at the, I feel like they kept ending up like skating. The, like, I think I was working the skate park that, that week or at that time and letting them skate late. I can't remember, but I just didn't remember filming some stuff of them, of day one skating the six foot quarter pipe, which again, at that point, I didn't know he could even skate transition, yeah. you know, and he's doing like these crazy finger flips and shit. Like, <laughs> um, and then Ronnie, uh, I, I don't think it took him many tries to do that switch hard flip, late flip at all. I, just, I, I think it was just one of those things I was filming the, the vert or the pyramid and he was trying something else and he threw that out there and I was like, I got to stay cause it looked, you know, and then I, I have the tape. So after this, I can, check dude, i would love know? to see the it's tries yeah, Cause that's a yeah. weird one to think like how it would look if he bailed right yeah like what 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 would he was happen? probably just bailing nonchalantly too i mean I at that time a krieger mm -hmm. he's just so hey film this i got like whatever he just yeah. it's like messing around yeah he's having him. fun exactly it's really shitting around and going back to the tapes and stuff and you have like the you know when they put out the bastion thing just recently with his part, they put out a whole 30 minute thing with like bales and this and that. And you were mentioning before all your tapes, you don't have the footage. I mean, you just have like tries, right? You don't have like behind the scenes B roll stuff. Not, a, yeah, not much, not as much as I wish I did. Think, and yeah. that stuff too is cool, man. If you put out like even just the tries of them trying yeah. this stuff, man, it's amazing. There's some, I mean, one of the more interesting things is when I, I just recently, cause like I said, how I did that, um, on my story, I just grabbed a tape and started going through it. Yeah. And then I was like, since I went through the whole tape, I was like, fuck, I might as well capture all this. I'll do a raw tapes. It was, uh, cause it ended up being a tape from the audio when we were filming the audio video in Miami. It's like one of the first audio filming trips Gotcha. for one step beyond. And, um, so I would just went ahead and started capturing from those tapes. I was like, I'll make one of these raw tapes, um, on our YouTube channel for this, right. you know? And, um, it's just so funny cause Joel Meinholz, you know, he's the Miami ambassador yep. yeah. and, mm -hmm. So this trip, um, Roger was on that trip actually on parts of it. Uh, and it was like, Joel is in the background of every single thing. Amazing. And then, and then there's just this, it, in this tape, it goes from like Kenny, um, 
Kenny Anderson skating the MLK ledges. He he did had the best footage there of anybody in in Miami for sure. He had the sickest lines, and then it cuts to just a session, and it's it's Ave and Deerdick <laughs> skating the ADP Hubba, which is like this classic Hubba you saw, like cost in. The white one. Had, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's Meinholz is he like he's just so amazing because he's just so like it's just so random. He'll just try the and he he kick, does kickflip frontside no side and sits on it and bails. And then stops trying and Abe's trying to do, Deerdick's trying to do, I always forget people's stances. Is Deerdick's regular, right? Deer, Deer's he's goofy. Goofy. He's a goofy. goofy. So he's trying half cab crooks. I think he's trying to half cab crooks revert. Okay. And Abe is trying to do, Abe's Ave goofy is, as well. Abe is regular footed. Ave, so then, Abe's regular. What the fuck was Abe trying? I guess he's trying to switch, switch crook. Switch crooks, I guess. Anyway, I just watched this and then Joel, and then it's just funny because this is like, I, I, it went from one session and then it pops, you know, this is 20 years ago. Yeah, so sure. it's like, I don't remember any of it. It's just like, what am I doing filming Ave and Deerdick? And then I can see Blayback, Blayback is down there shooting photos. And then Joel rolls into the scene, tries the kickflip front nose. And then he starts hopping a nose slide on the huge flat ledge and does, he lands like three of them, but his toe drags and, and he goes to try it again. And then just cuts back to that. And then the <laughs> next session, it's just so random. It's just so sick to see, that's you know, amazing. like when you see a clip and that's not an example, but you see a classic clip that you remember. And then you see the, the people who are there at the session. And you're like, what the fuck? Like Tony Hawk was there. Or, you know, just, <laughs> that's the best. Wait, so you just randomly pick one tape and you don't go in chronological order at all. Like you just randomly choose one. This, and then Yeah. Of- this was just a, a recent thing. I just like, like it's literally a week ago. I took like, like I have these filing cabinets um, I'll find a, one that's more organized, but you know, it's just like, I pulled, pull this, this, this drawer out. And this is, um, this is a 2013, uh, 14, what? uh, 15 and 16. That's part not of that many though. I know. Well, I'm, like I said, I'm kind of like, I like cut uh, the second somebody bails, yeah. I cut. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. But, um, but yeah, so I just was like, uh like with my filming with on a story sure. and just pulled out a tape and this is uh steve brandy jamal williams dustin eggling new york city Amazing. and you know and just then just put it in the in the dv uh deck and start can i request one <laughs> sure J- anything with john ige so oh i just posted one you just missed it man. did i Ige. or geez sunday i posted one i pulled a tape it was 2000 four or 2003 and it was Ige, Ige and Andy Honan at Pulaski oh, and then wow. and then Pep rolls in and I got a line of Pep what yeah how did I not see this I this know. is on your and Instagram this was on my Instagram story okay. so it's like gone already but then it oh, this tape story was, yeah this tape was in fucking insane though because I think I figured out what it was is the tape must have been I had like a a long lens like a a side camera that I'd just give to like hey Steve film you know backup angle so it was just like it was Ige it was his nolly hard flip over a garbage can at Pulaski Mm -hmm. and then Pep had a line and then all of a sudden literally the next thing was Tampa Am it was so weird so I'm filming it was like Neil Mims and uh, Rick McCrank and I actually skated that Tampa Am I figured out why this tape was so crazy but then literally it cut and it was Jake Rupp I did a trip with just Jake Rupp and Michael Mealy to Ocean City Maryland so then it was like that trip this is all on one tape. Then it cuts to I'm in Philly <laughs> and it's Pat Corcoran front crooked grinding a, a handrail. Oh. And Kalis is filming Fisheye. He's like in, in it with a VX filming Fisheye, what? filming Pat Corcoran skate this handrail. And then it cuts down to Miami. It's just the randomest. I was just like filming it and what? I kept commenting on it. Like, dude, what the fuck? This is the random. And that, uh, uh, what else did it end up? Have Jeff Lenosi on it. And Sick. like, is it this so, something? Such a, I don't know if this this is what you do, but do you just upload the whole thing and put it on YouTube? You would no, cut it up. No, but that would that would that would I don't know. I, I personally I would like that. Yeah. Because just because you could kind of it's I don't know. You could scrub around. You could and scrub around see, and yeah. like I'm interested though. So it's different from someone I who think, doesn't know. Yeah. So I'm right. like, I want to see what's going on. I want to see what Andy Honan randomly tried and didn't do. Right. Like, you right. Know. But there could be 10 minutes of that tape that nobody lands anything. What I would do when I make those raw tapes things, cause I, I, I agree. Like it's almost, it's more interesting now seeing what somebody almost did or what sure. they tried. Yeah. Um, I always put tries of that stuff in just to show like mm-hmm. another one on those, you know, it's just a rant. It's just so, 
a, a session with like Bam and, you know, and Joel and Kenny Anderson. And there's things I, um, I still actually didn't send them to Kenny. I meant to send to Kenny, but there are things like, I didn't know Kenny, uh, you know, the synagogue rail in, in Miami. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. class, the most classic Miami spot, probably the aside from the triangle. Mm-hmm. And Kenny was doing kickflip crooked grinds on that and not, what? not landing, yeah. but like lock kickflip crook and grinding it. And then, you know, falling out of it instead, he didn't have control. Sure. And you could see there was two sessions where he was trying it and coming close. And that's the set, one of the sessions Ed Slego did Nolly Crook. Mm. And then there's this, oh, there's a spot. I was watching Cairo's thing mm-hmm. on you guys, uh, Cairo's stop and chat. And you yeah. guys are trying to remember a spot where he ollied that crazy fence gap. Oh, yeah. In yeah. Miami. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's, it's the 71st Street. Uh, school. It's like a high school on 71st Street in Miami. And there's a kinked hubba at the other side, but it's like a really, really mellow flat ledge and it kinks out. Huh. And mad people like Arto and like, if you saw it, you'd be like, oh yeah, that that thing. And Kenny was doing, he got beat on a nollie flip no side and he lands it. But it's just one of those things I wanted to send to Kenny, like, dude, I forgot. Though This is another uh, one that got away, you know, like he had so many of those, but he nollie flipped, no slid the whole thing. It's a long slide and through a kink and he lands it and his shoulders are just, and he's like, oh, you know, and then tried it again for a while and never got it. I think I was there that day. Really? And Retta was, yeah, you were there when Retta was there. Yeah. That's so We're doing the Blue Torch shit. Oh, that's right. What's Blue Torch? Blue Torch would uh, end up turning into fuel. Oh, okay. and like um, Felix and I were doing all this crazy, like just party stuff. That's right. Like filming all like this nightlife <laughs> shit. Huh? Yeah. That was a wild trip. Tim Gavin was there too. Totally. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you okay. Go. Partying okay. at that time. Yeah. yeah. You got to put this stuff out, man. Because Instagram, people post stuff, even Jacob Rosenberg. It's like, cool, he posts this stuff on Instagram, but like, I'm never going to see it again. I have to go back right, to Jason, right. J- his, his Jacob Rosenberg's whole thing and look through it all. If it's on YouTube, I well, can go and find it and it's on one channel and I can like I don't mind looking through your Instagram and all. I would say what I would recommend is that you know you have the highlights you can put. Oh right. I would I've never put, use those. Yeah, I would do that for your high for those videos like you said what you posted with Ige. Right. I right. think that would be amazing just because I could you could scroll through for days totally. and be like totally. That's true. you could do it per skater or per, t- yeah. per tape. Almost. Yeah, per yeah. tape, whatever it tape is. Tape one, tape well, that, that, two. Yeah. What's rad yeah. about the per tape is just the randomness that you say, like you're in Tampa yeah. one day, then the next cut is you're in Miami, and then mm-hmm. you're in Philly. Do it on That's YouTube it. so you can monetize it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would do it on YouTube as well, but yeah. if that was, yeah. if you had little snippets like here and there on your Instagram, that would be pretty rad too. Yeah, I'm not saying yeah. don't put it on your Instagram. I'm just saying right, like YouTube right. is such a great platform. Totally. For and that's how stuff. a lot of people, most people just sit on their couch, queue up YouTube, and that's how you're watching all your, Dude. a lot of your media anyways. Oh my God. And you could always do the swipe up if you post it on yeah, your you story. Always YouTube, swipe up to the I, YouTube channel uh, to watch it. Yeah, true. Yeah. True. I, um, oh shit, I didn't even forget about it. Everybody yeah. forgets about the swipe If you need up. some help with that, hit me up, dude. I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, YouTube's crazy because like I've been watching a lot of YouTube on my couch now. I'll, I have the Apple TV and whatever. Right. And I was doing some, I took a nap, right? Like and always. I, like always. Yeah. I take naps. <laughs> of course. And um, no, I, I had it on YouTube. I had it on something, right? And I woke up and it's this guy, his, his, his videos are like two hours long and he just walks around cities. He's yeah. walking around yeah. Rome. Amazing. And, and it's sat, entertaining. Bro, I sat there for another 45 <laughs> yeah. minutes watching this dude walk around Rome. Yeah. Just walking, not talking. Doesn't talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. He just walks around, shows the little sights, does his little. You don't thing. see him. You don't even see you him. Never it's just see his him. Perspective. I've yeah, seen his like shadow. This. I've seen his shadow. He'll get on the train. People are like, yep. you know, he never some, talks to the camera. Nothing. He no just walks way. around it's the pe- city. Pe- my experience. <laughs> Meanwhile, like hundreds of thousands of views, this guy has. Wow. But I, I find myself like, it just goes to show. Like I think Kelly's right in a sense of like, if you just put a whole tape on there. Right. People can scrub through, but also just watch. You never know where you're like you said you were like blown away when you were looking at Pulaski, then it goes to Tampa Am, then it goes right. to Miami. Like people are gonna think the same thing. They're like, what the hell? What is yeah, that? I don't yeah. know. It is pretty entertaining. I don't know. Yeah. I watched a guy walk around Rome for 45 minutes, not <laughs> right. saying a goddamn word. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I was enthralled. I was like, Oh, this is great. Yeah. I mean, I just yeah. woke up from a nap, I was a little groggy, but 
It was fascinating. It's another form of virtual reality. You're like walking in this guy's shoes as he's in. Yeah, the, he's you know? in your. He's the goal. And then the next one, he was in like Florence and Rome, and he yeah. just goes to he travels around and just walks around the city. I could see how that could be interesting. It's really interesting. Yeah. He does cuts though. He'll cut to like he was in this, and then he cut to like this other street or something. Right. So he edits it a little bit, right. but I always trip even like on like if there's a line that wasn't made. There's like the one trick in there that it was like he does a buttery nolly flip. I know. And you want to <sighs> capture that, but you're like, oh man, it's just that one. It's just a nolly. This is a nolly flip. But there was one that happened. I don't know who who maybe it was R B Stevie uh, at those Newport ledges in uh, the Seaport ledges. I mean, like there's a front heel on flat, but it didn't land anything else. But the front heel was so good that it kind of it just used that. It just used that. Yeah. It came yeah. out years later. Yeah, you know, and it, like that's the stuff that. Oh, there's me, a lot yeah. of that for yeah. sure, dude. There's, I can't wait for Socrates, man. He needs to come out. With, I'll keep saying oh, this. Shit. There's a transfer tape. There's a few transfer tapes that Socrates needs to come out with, bro. You need to come out with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> because, I feel like I'll... Go ahead, sorry. No, because it's it's one of those things that there's so much footage that's, especially from your favorite skater's favorite skater. Right, That right. it's just now it's... Not that it's a disservice for what people have done at that time, but like, dude, there's a lot of footage that has never been used. And it's yeah. skate park footage, it's footage in the streets, it's like from Shiloh, Guy... Yeah, that's amazing. Jed Walters. Like, do so many people that you're just like... I'd watch that. T yeah. I'd watch a whole tape of that. I'd, yeah. That's what exactly. we're saying. Yeah. Josh. Put, put it out, Josh. Put it out. <laughs> dude, the raw <laughs> clips of Bobby Puglio. Oh, oh yeah. God, Let's dude. go. You got to do something. <laughs> Let's do something, Josh. Well, I've done... Like I said, I've done these, like, where they're edited down. Right. On, uh, per tape um, on the TOA Insta or sure. YouTube channel. Sure. But... um. And that's why I always am like, should I do, I don't even have my own YouTube channel. It's just all through Theories of Atlantis because it's like, oh, my, there's already a, you know, a, a subscribership there. Just put it right. there. But maybe you could do one of my own that's just more of this, just like and tons, you know, where it's more in depth. And then yeah. you could, I don't know. This I is what you do, though. You, 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 you know, you, you do your own YouTube, right? You're putting these raw tapes out. You're putting a playlist now into the Theories YouTube page. So now every time you upload something, you have a playlist on the theories mm -hmm. page. Mm. So now people are seeing right. your followerships right, right, right. now seeing that. So you can do you can do a playlist that's not uh, absolutely your own content. absolutely. Oh. So then you know now you're now you're uh, taking your Instagram stories, and Kelly's going to teach you how to do this. You <laughs> put the link in there to the videos. All right. Then you tweet it out. And you do a TikTok of you dancing, <laughs> and then, and then every dancing. Start, everyone starts coming over. Yeah. <laughs> And after you dance, you had the link there. <laughs> do you do you guys have a TikTok? Really? Have you done it yet? I, no, I, I signed up, I, I but I've it, not I done it. I set it up. I set it up. I have, I've, okay. I've done. I yeah, I have, I've, yeah, I've set it up, and I've done nothing with it. I haven't even done uh, Twitter. You know, we should sure. considering it's. You know, we have all these brands to. Yeah. Do it's crazy. It, it's kind of unrelated, but kind of similar. It's just the way things work. We did. I did an, uh, a story. Like I, I used to, you know, on. Theories of Atlantis, I used to do a lot more just like stories, you know, mm -hmm. but people don't read, you know, now sure. if I wrote something, there's going to be six people who read it. I'd still love to do it when I have the time. Anyways, I did a story um, about this book. It was a book review. I used to do book reviews on our skateboard <laughs> side. Okay. Um, and it's about- How come I've never heard uh, of this? <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did this one on this, uh, it's about a book, but it's mo mostly just about this concept about owls. Um, and I never knew like the alien workshop video, my, which is one of my top three favorites memory screen, Ooh. the first alien workshop video, um, that term comes for this, from this concept of a screen memory. And the idea is that you aliens, when they abduct or, you know, are seen by people that mm -hmm. they have this pro this ability to make people perceive them as something else. And so this guy wrote a book where he literally, he like catalogs hundreds and hundreds of people's stories of having this experience where they see tons of people have these really strange experiences with owls where they like a very common one is they're driving on a dark road late at night in a mm. forest and they come around the corner and there's a, an owl that's bigger. They explain it from memory as being that's bigger amazing. than any, any owl has ever, you know, can actually get to and it won't move. Out and, of the road. Right. Um, or the owl will be on the side of the road and it's staring at them in this weird way or the, an owl that follows them um, and stays right next to their window. What? And 
basically the again the people have these strange interactions with owls and then they also um have memories of owls visiting them or staring at them through the windows these are people who eventually end up having like like uh oh god what do you call it my fucking brain um through hypnosis mm. who come out with stories, abduction stories. And then they, it's like this theory is that the owls are using, you know, the aliens are making you see them. And it's not just owls, but the owls are the most common. Then there's something with a, people have seen deer and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I did a story on this seven years ago, mm-hmm. maybe six years ago, uh, buried in the probably seven, let's say 600 posts back on TOA. Sure. Right now I could screen share if I go look at our at our uh, Shopify um, stats, the thing bringing the most amount of views, and it's not just like, like let's say we just released these pants on our site this weekend that are like really popular for us. Um, that the the amount of clicks on that or visits to that page, let's say it's sixty. Mm-hmm. Owl's story will have four hundred and fifty. <laughs> it's it's always like nine to ten times. Still, Still every time I check, everybody loves your owl story. That's amazing. It must be on some random, you know, there must be some Reddit and people, but still, how are that many people are still going to that thing? It's this tiny story. It's like this long. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the concept is awesome. Like the story is amazing. If you read the book, it's fucking awesome. And an interesting story that, you know how your mom, like, or most, a lot of people's moms, um, ask you, Hey, Hey, what do you want for Christmas? You know, mm-hmm. I don't know what to get you. You're coming home. Like, I'm not just going to. So I was like, Oh, I want this book about owls. Like, and so I sent her a link. I opened up, you know, Christmas day, opened it up, got this book. And then my girlfriend and I, my mom has like a little garage apartment above her garage. So my girlfriend and I went to the garage that night, put everything away. And then we were going to go get some food. And we pulled out and on the power lines behind my mom's house, there was an owl sitting on the power line, staring into my mom's house. (laughs) And I'm serious. I've maybe seen an, I grew up in the, in the sticks Sure. As a kid, my grandpa and I saw maybe saw a couple owls when I was like, you know, six or seven. And this is the first owl I've seen since then. And is the night. Wow. And this whole book is about it's not just about the screen memory. Their con- the concept is that owls represent something like they visit. I'm not saying I believe this, but it's I fuck. I love that this is you know that this is yeah. a thing, yeah. and that they represent some kind of like transition or they they represent something in in the human like experience of like uh, evolution like spiritual evolution or something like this. And based on all the stories, this guy has been told by different people and the things that happen to them after they see out, it's just such a, wow, it's just so amazing. Wow, and dude. the fact that like literally the day I got this book, There's an owl there just there. happens to be a freaking owl staring. Yeah. And you happen to see it. Yeah. Like just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was an owl across, I, across the street when I, where I grew up when my, my bedroom was where the street is. And then across the street, there was a big tree and the owl was in there every night. Ooh. Maybe that means something, dude. Ooh. Ooh. Alien. Did you see him? <laughs> no, I swear though, this owl every fucking night for years. This wow. owl. We were so scared awesome because the, the 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 our cats, the owls could take the cat. Mm, oh right. yeah, yeah. I wonder what that means, man. Listen, you should put some uh, products on that page of yours. Yes. Put some products About. on the bottom. Make put, some put owl those, pants, yeah, dude. Put those pants there. Oh my put, uh, God, you're gonna dude. sell some. You're gonna be like, Holy yo, we shit. are. We're killing it. How? Yeah, I'm out. I'm gonna go get to work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the TOA is doing good. No, we made these owl pants, man. Like, no, they made so. an owl collection. Owl collection. Owl, collection. Yeah, owl, collection. Yeah, owl hats. Owl. I'm telling you, this is the way. I'm not. I can't. Like, I, if I could get up, I have a. We have an owl board about this exact the owl transitioning into a, a human from a human to a or from an alien to an sure. owl. Go that it. I just. It just showed, like, we just had it shipped from the warehouse, and I just picked it up today, and it's in it's in my uh, bedroom right now. Wow. Go get it. Let's see it. You want me to get it? Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, so, so funny. The what is this? Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, it's like the... He's going to go get the... Yes. Dubs, what are you drinking there? Sweet and sour sauce? This happens to be... <laughs> this happens to be <laughs> beef, <laughs> lemon, apple, and ginger. Okay. But the it's beef the whole is thing very, very powerful. <laughs> very powerful. It looks like Imagine. sweet and sour sauce. Imagine. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Just straight out the bottle. <laughs> oh my god, man. Wow. I love it, bro. It's the last one before my dessert. I, well, I love sweet and sour sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. You have okay. to try it after. No, I will. Ooh. Oh, there you go. What? Alien, a small alien, he's turning into a big owl. 
I love that. Dude. That nine. does look right. That it, makes sense. There's an awesome story in that book. This little this lady tells a story of when she was a little girl. She was at summer camp, and she was she was walking around this lake at camp, and she uh, she came around the corner, and there was a creature in like in the brush, and as it turned, she explained the way she describes it was exactly like a gray alien, you know, like Ooh. three foot tall and whatever. But sure. she said as it turned and looked at her, it like it like changed it like glitched and morphed and changed and then that and and to an owl and she was just oh. like free as like a whatever 10 year old kid like what the fuck did i just see like i mm. thought i saw that but now it's an owl it was just one of those interesting wow Bailey was like oh shit you got me. You got oh, me. Shit. Yeah, exactly. oh shit god damn it owl i'm gonna get in trouble Funny it's all we, <laughs> the alien just cruised oh shit <laughs> Listen, we should have been talking about this the whole time, dude. This is amazing. I love stuff. this talk, I dude. Too, bro. I love it. Owl man. aliens turning into owls. So we good, love bro. skateboarding, but man, there's so much other oh, stuff. There's so out much there. other stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Josh, you're a great dude, man. You gotta come by. Whenever you're in town next, we have guests back in the studio. You gotta come by. Kick it with us again. Tell some more owl stories and <laughs> yes. some, some JFK stuff. Well, do you I love, love all it. that stuff. Love do you it, have man. anything? What's new coming up with TOA right now? Just, oh, Jesus. Well, well, the, the Picture Show thing was the newest. Amazing. Like, we, we launched Picture Show. It was supposed to launch last March. Um, oh. And then, yeah. Oh. So then we had to push it back. And then we pushed, you know, it was like, oh, this pandemic, the pandemic will, you know, subside sure. in a month. And then, so it finally launched in May. And then we couldn't get anything made again. And then uh, the first, the next season finally released like uh, two weeks ago. And that's when the edit, the the new video piece came out, mm. um, which I urge you to go see. Um, and uh, was a lot of fun to make. That's the thing we were making in the in the basement. Oh, the yes, murder, yes. Murder okay. Murder scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so that's, that's new. And then uh, we have, I don't know, there's just a bunch of stuff. You know, you know how it is, but imagine if you're just like one brand, you know, the amount of stuff you you, you end up planning. And then uh, yeah. now, you know, Hops has some some pretty rad stuff in the works and Traffic's got a video coming sure. later this year and blah, blah, you know, Traffic released. That was the other thing. We fucking Traffic, uh, they, those guys were working on a full length video for like two years and it was supposed to come out in September with the boards. Mm. But because of the pandemic, the, the boards that were supposed yeah. to arrive, I think in late August, they just they literally just arrived yesterday. Oh my god! So that they finally just were like, "Dude, we they finished the video. Like, dude, we have to." So they put it out. Yeah. in December, you know, with oh. no boards for like eight months, and then so wow. finally we have some traffic boards coming uh, next <clears throat> week to to people. Damn. What um, what uh? Where can people go? With what website? What's the website? Just theoriesofatlantis.com. Theories it's like of Atlantis. Our, our okay. Can they for, buy stuff on there? They can yeah. get it some. used to be a blog site, and then our like a friend who does web stuff was like, he like he's like, what do you? I had like a web store separate of the, you know, he's like, what are you doing? This needs to just be one. Sure. And he he combined it Amazing. all. So. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And then you got the owl collection coming out mm -hmm. soon. Yeah. Uh, we should do a nine club theories of Atlantis owl collection. Pants. Yeah. The pants. Pants. Dude. Owl pants. Owl pants. Yeah. yeah. If we could capitalize on this page being viewed 450 Which, times a day you, go. you guys' faces that. each one of your faces transition into some kind of to owl. owl screech yeah. owl barn owl oh there's different types of owls yeah i'm gonna keep my eye open for this. <laughs> yeah. never for thought about animals. it dude <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah yeah and I'm, I'm working i've been working on a, a personal like trying to film stuff um uh, for a personal project too but but it's so you know yeah I'm able to I basically film for that once a week, you know, and then everything you know, the rest of the weeks working on TOA stuff. But, sure. but yeah, that's a, um, I I'm that sure guy. there's something I'm like, oh my God, dude, I can't believe you didn't mention that, that thing. Well, at least you yeah. remembered the Vladimir. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's not going to bug you, right? Yeah. yeah. But wait, are you filming for your own personal part? Like you skating? Well, I'm filming for a person, like a project, but I'm also, I'd, I'd like to, I've been trying, I've been trying, dude. Yeah, dude. yeah I've been trying. It's like, like I said, the pandemic was like, you couldn't go to the gym. You couldn't, you know, like, so I started going to like the industrial areas around, um, Brooklyn, you know, wherever I could on my bike and Steve Brandy has been helping me film. I filmed him since he was like 14. So he owes me. So he's been like, and when I film something, it's not like, um, 
it's like, like I film, you know, a normal person, you know, it's like maybe the long trick is like three hours to get. And I'm like five hours oh. and, and three meltdowns and like I lose my voice. <laughs> I'm right there every with you, time. Bro. I'm right there with you. Oh, that's but, the story uh, of my life. It's a fun part about yeah. skating, man. That's story. a struggle when you're trying to get clips, you know, yeah. it's the story of my career, man. And when you find when you finally get it. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. The I've been setting the VX. Beautiful. I've been putting the VX on a little tripod too and trying to get, and I've just been burnt. Right now, tapes are like hard to get come by too because they discontinued them. And I've been burning through. I, I went down, I went to Tampa with, I don't know how many tapes, but a lot of tapes because I knew I was going to go film in New Orleans. And, uh, and I, by the time it was time to go to New Orleans, I, did, I had one tape left and oh. I had to like, Ask Jordan if I could borrow his because Jordan has a VX because I wasted all these tapes trying to film myself and I didn't get any <laughs> clips on them because you just set it recording you know it's like sure. I have an hour yeah. you know it usually yeah. takes me five hours to make one trick so <laughs> can you put it on like an EP what's that I don't know man the old VHS tapes you could like put them oh extended set your, play yeah extended play <laughs> yeah. Mm. no I don't think I don't think I got that for the VX some company will maybe make those tapes I don't know because you you can't get them. You got you to gotta get them off eBay. There's an external yeah. recorder you can get for the VX. Yeah. Oh, digital? Digital, yeah. Gotcha. But it's like um, RCA cable, I believe. That's or actually, it might be FireWire. FireWire. It's yeah. FireWire to the, yeah. That's Just another thing to have, yeah. like, strapped to your fucking yeah. camera. There. He's already got a battery pack strapped to him. Yeah. He's got lights in his hands. He's got all kinds yeah, of stuff. a lot of stuff going on here. Dude, the worst slam, the most painful slam I ever had was filming at that, those Atlanta, those the checkerboard spot in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. The roughest... I was filming Matt Milligan for his 411 profile <laughs> in like 1998 and I hit a rock and like caught air. And the only thing, the first and only thing all my weight hit was that battery pack on my, on my pelvis. Oh, and I thought I broke my pelvis. It was the most pain I've ever felt. I'm like, fuck. Cause I'm, you know, put my arm up. Sure. Like, the camera. <laughs> yeah. Here we yeah. go. And, uh, yeah, that belt pack, man. 2021, man. Times. Condenses batteries. I mean, how do they not? I'm sure they have like drone lights that can follow you around now. You ever use a drone? Actually, I got my girlfriend a drone for her birthday last year. I haven't filmed closet. skating with it yet, but we take it. We went like hiking, and 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 she and uh, she crashed it into a tree, and then bounced down these rocks into a river, and uh, it's straight to the race. You got to race it. Right oh yeah, did it still work after that? Yeah, it survived. Oh, wow. wow. Amazing. Bag of rice, man. Keep that handy. <laughs> yeah. Keep that I handy. I heard it works bro. for the iPhone, but it works apparently for anything. For drones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> man, drones in the river, owls, aliens turning into owls. Vladimir. Vladimir. Love it, bro. I Save some you, stories, man. man. We got to yeah. we gotta come <laughs> back. You, you, yeah. This is great. You got to come back in when you're in town. Come sit down with us, man. Yeah. I'm down. We always I'm have down. a great time talking to you, dude. This is yeah, really, yeah, really, time. really Thanks. fun. Oh, man. really fun. Seriously, Definitely. really fun. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, likewise. Um, I've been having fun listening to the. Uh, I haven't. I, I listen to like all the Nine Club shows almost. Damn. Um, and then the Stop and Chats I hadn't listened to. Right. Um, through the pandemic. I don't know why. And then so, like, a couple weeks ago, I started listening to some of the Stop and Chats. Yeah, and, they're cool, man. I don't know. <laughs> We're just kind of doing what we can, right, to get yeah. by, right? I, I think when we can get back into the studio, we'll have people here for stop and chats because I'd love to keep that going because we do – the skaters come in and they're reviewing their old clips so we pull – That's what I was going to say. I like that It's a amazing. Lot. I like yeah. – Jeremy Ray is great. He's a great storyteller and totally. he always – like every every trick he has like an interesting story and every trick he's done is insane dude um so that was a fun one to watch i was waiting for i was like where you know what where are my clips man like you guys don't have my like what my, happened chris yeah you know, like what happened am, <laughs> a tampa am run or something rod just yeah, like, I had rod a just work all day yesterday and all work on this morning hey man hey man, <laughs> hey, hey, man. Hey, hey, byoc man. dude bring your own clips you know what <laughs> i got them i got them right there <laughs> Next time we'll be sure to pull some clips, bro. Definitely. Your Tampa. What what year was that Tampa Am run? Um, ninety six, I think. Ninety six. Pull some tricks. 96. Was it a good run? Yeah, man. We'll have to dig that up. <laughs> yes. Fourth place, bro. Fourth? fourth. Yeah. Really? You got nice. fourth place in a Tampa Am? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Jesus, I think I went in a Tampa Am one time, like missed a backside flip over the pyramid and walked <laughs> off the course. 
So well, you, you didn't skate the park every day it. of your yeah, life. Yeah, he also worked there at one point. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, okay. See, Raj is just trying to hold me. He, he wants to be like the, the good filmer skater, you know what I mean? <laughs> he's he's trying to hold back my career. He's like, Josh Stewart, man. I ain't going to play no clips of him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Josh, bro, this has been a pleasure, dude. Thank you yeah, so likewise. much for stopping and chatting with us. Yeah, man. You're always welcome here, man, via Zoom or via in person, dude. We'll love to get you back in the studio here and kick it. Almost fully vaccinated, man, so I can come There you go. Anytime. Me too. Yep. Me too. Too, man halfway there we're we're almost yep. there man living on so. a prayer got some catching up to do we yeah, got to catch it up <laughs> 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 good, let man. that thing roll out a little bit more <laughs> yeah. hey thank you so much josh bro thanks guys you're the yeah, man. stoked yeah, to meet you jaron uh, uh, yeah. since you're the you guys never are... met you before no yeah I, I you're a familiar face in skateboarding but definitely i don't think we've ever met you know, <laughs> no i would know uh, like i said i'm a huge like the girl chocolate crew man i'm a huge fan so well definitely man. i always trip out on that song when you see him the i always trip out on that stuff like I, do you people that you should have met in skateboarding yeah, but that, you have never met yeah, we never happens to me paths. all the time too yeah. i'm like i know that i've never met you that whole girl like i said that whole girl chocolate aside from kenny anderson that whole thing and you the i never i i just never i never met rick mike i mean i met him like you know somebody's like hey this is me Shake their hands, right, 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 right. Which is kind of rad because I like having some of those like heroes that you ne- you know what I mean, that are still like, yeah, like you, larger than life. You know, right. they're not like real people to me. They're still like yeah, up there. I feel you on that. Yeah, but even yeah, being that you know we've been in this industry for so long, you know, like the re- that we haven't crossed paths. Like it's yeah, this. Oh, I know weird. it's crazy, yeah, definitely. It's but weird. dude, nice to meet you, Vio. Over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Amazing. All Thank right. you so much, Josh. Thanks, guys. Thank you, dude. Josh Stewart, everybody, huh? Mm-hmm.